So, sorry, uh, my <clears throat> I have my Discord sounds just muted, so I uh, sometimes I don't see right away when somebody calls me. Yeah. Because Discord sounds are uh, the worst. If I don't have my headphones on, my house gets driven crazy <laughs> from all the yep. dings and beeps and bops. I'm in 200 servers. Yep, I know. I got you. No worries. Word up. You're black. You're oh, wait, black. You, might, you might have to click my picture. Oh, you know what? Actually, I forgot my... Uh... There we go. There we are. There you go. There you go, then. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much once again for coming on. I'm looking forward to this. This should be a fun time. Um, may go an hour, may go an hour and a half. <clears throat> the past couple shows have gone an hour and a half just because there's so much to talk about. And stuff, so, but, yeah. Um, like I said, once we go... Yeah. I mean, like um, like I said, usually like how I've gone with is just like we cover our two events and then like we can talk about whatever you want to. Like I, I let the, the guests then pick what they want to talk about and stuff. So. that right there. Look pretty good. <coughs> yep. Fantastic.
restart over and set everything back up. It took me a few hours to get. I mean, just because like I, I'm still kind of just like you're my third show since I've kicked back off. So like I'm still kind of getting back in the swing of things. So, but yeah, I got yeah I got guests uh, uh, lined up until I need to find a guest for the end of February. So because like next week I got Doobie and then I got Smith after that. So. Not very. I mean, I, I'm just going to tell him flat out. I mean, it's like, if he starts acting weird, it's like, hey, man, dial it back a little bit. Okay, let's not. Because I, I know he, he said some things that are a little sus, but, you know, I mean, I, I'm looking for content creators. I'm not less like for people that agree with me. Just there are certain people I will not bring on, but that's just my own personal rule. So, but sure.
recording in three, two, one. Yeah, um, Tertium, it's uh, on a loop. I accidentally um, switched back to my old scene. <clears throat> yeah, I do plan on adding that too, Elk. Hey, hey, Wick, what's up? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I gotta actually have to sign into Twitch. Let me see what's going on over here. Uh, Alex Kirsch invited me to be on his uh, podcast. I'm happy to be here. Muted for him, for his sake at the moment. So I was trying to give him a... Uh, Time to finish setting up and finalizing all his stuff. Jinx. Uh, how you guys doing? I'm supposed to debate one of my chatters later. He knew the rules. He was vague posting in my chat, being disagreeable. So you come in, debate me, uh, or just shut up. Yeah, uh, he's just started back up. He's been gone for a while. <clears throat> but I talked to him in Wix Discord uh, a couple times, and he seems like a solid dude. We get along pretty good. Um, and also, he's uh, I I'm I'm very familiar with the area that he's from, so we have some common uh, life understandings, I guess you could say. <clears throat> Which um, automatically makes me respect. And good evening, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Current Events on Tap, a podcast brought to you by the Alex Kirsch Project. And I'm your host, Alex Kirsch, pragmatic progressive, U.S. Army veteran, truck driver, gamer, and streamer. If this is your first time on the show, please do not forget to hit like, share, and comment. We are currently streaming live only on YouTube, but because for, for some reason my multi-stream has decided to take a crap and die, so <laughs> looks like I'm only going to be streaming on YouTube tonight. Hopefully I'll be able to upload later. The format for this show is very simple. I bring one or more guests on the show. We talk beer or the beverage of choice and current events of the week. Each person will discuss their beverage of choice for this whole hour or however long it goes. And whether it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic, it does not matter. Then each person will then cover two current events of their choosing. They give the current event, they give their assessment, then each person gets a chance to give their assessment, then we discuss. Debate may be possible, but rest assured you are in a good faith zone and you will get your chance to get your point across. The point of this space is for all for us to discuss the issue and what we think of it and keep an open mind to what the other person has to say. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our guest this evening, evening Elder Drazi. How's it going, Alex? How's it going? Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about yourself before we get started? <laughs> um, so I uh, sort of made my uh, place in Twitch poll by talking to people about uh, Mr. Grill. I did some interviews in the beginning for a project that I'm still working on, documentary style film. And I've sort of branched out and been kind of doing my own thing. Lately, I've been reviewing some of the um, discourse that he's had with Destiny to see how it all fell apart. But um, also branching into like physics and things like that. I'm all over the place. I'm a, I'm a variety streamer. There you go. Fantastic. And once again, I just want to say thank you so much for being willing to be a guest on this show. And just be advised, I have cats and they like to dance on my equipment. So... <clears throat> Yep, just, it, just now, so. It's my honor. Yep, I'm much obliged to you. So um, let's go ahead and start talking about our uh, beverages of choice. Uh, tonight, I have a Michigan beer, as I am now a citizen of the state of Michigan, from Bell's Brewery, Oberon Eclipse. Oberon Eclipse, it's like they have the regular Oberon, but this is like a much darker version. And I got to tell you, Bell's, this is my favorite beer that they have ever produced. It is absolutely delicious. Because, like, the Oberon has that nice little citrus taste to it. It's very, very light. It's very flavorful. But I think the reason why I like this one so much is just because it's got that dark, you know, wheat, citrusy. It's really just a beautiful blend. Now, I've 
I've been told that the best way to have this kind of a beer is to have an orange inside of it. Kind of like how some people put a fat tire, the amber ale, and they put an orange slice on top of it. But for some reason, I'm not really one to put the orange slice on top of a beer, essentially. I just think that this is just good as is. Now, um, for those that are not aware, and if I haven't told you already, Elder uh, Drazi, when it comes down to beer, I rate a good beer if I could drink it cold or at room temperature. As somebody that uh, lived in Germany, I'm used to drinking beers at room temperature, and I think a beer is delicious if it's drank at room temperature. Like, it's just me. I'm kind of a beer snob sometimes, and I'm drinking out of my trusty 428 uh, St. Barb's mug that I got down when I was stationed down at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. So big old giant mug to drink uh, some delicious beer with. So um, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your beverage of the evening? So um, I grabbed two different ones. I have uh, um, probably going to start off with a PBR because um, I, li I like a thicker beer in general. Um, and I think for the price, it's about as good as it gets for a cheap beer. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, yeah, a Reds because um, I it really bothers me that people... Uh, I feel like some people are like afraid to say like I'm drinking a Reds or if they're having like a Smirnoff ice or something like I, I like Reds. They taste good. Um, mm -hmm. When this started to be a thing, I, I think I drank not your father's mountain ale or like I went through like four, six packs in two weeks just because I loved really? it. I was like, just so good. And I very rarely drink. My wife was like, are you like drinking now? I was like, no, they're just good. I like them. Yeah. yeah. Are you, how do you feel about Blake's uh, ciders? Do you like their stuff? They're okay. They have a bit more of a um, like they have a bit more of like a bite to them, um, which is fine. But if I'm gonna if I'm drinking something like a Reds or something, like I prefer it to be lesser. Like like I can drink like a whiskey and I don't mind a bite. But if it's something that's like made to be like like a tasty kind of beverage, it's weird if that bite's super present to me. Oh sure, yeah. I I'm a huge fan of Blake's. One of these and. Actually, Blake's is not too – there's a Blake's uh, brewery not too far away from where I live, and one of these days I want to go down and get some of their stuff on tap. My favorite one is the uh, <clears throat> Triple Jam. That one is just uh, – to me, that's the chef's kiss that they have. But there was one I tried from there. It was the Mango Habanero. I wasn't too sure if I was going to like that, but I was pleasantly surprised by it. I'm like, Mango Habanero in a cider. But, like, you you, you – Taste the mango, and it took me a few sips to actually get the habanero kick to it, you know. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, some people, they don't like ciders, but I like ciders, but they have to be, like, good, in my opinion. Uh, Reds is good. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. Reds is a very yes. good cider. They're good. Um, it's funny. Mango and habanero go together, like, famously. Uh, I'm a big I'm a big guy when it comes to, like, uh, hot sauces and spice. And mango and mm -hmm. habanero is peanut butter and jelly right there. Although... Yeah. I've I've seen some people get ballsy with like um like I've seen like a jalapeno energy drink I try I don't like I don't like my drink shouldn't be spicy my food should be spicy mm -hmm. not my drink so my hats off to you for trying that uh yeah it weirds me out well I mean and funny enough I actually bought myself a hot sauce making kit because that's one of the things I want to do is I want to start making my own hot sauces because like you know I don't know where this kick <laughs> came from <laughs> but like I I just started like eat experimenting with different kinds of hot sauces. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a little bit more brave than I used to be, but, like, it, it kind of really depends, like, what my mood is. But, like, um, we got some friends of ours. Um, the wife actually got these hot sauces off of TikTok because it's, like, a, a father and a son that make their own hot sauces. And I tried three different ones. One of them was, like, a Carolina Reaper or something like that that was, like, oh, God. And, like, I, I had, like, a little bit, and I was sweating. Like, I actually had to downgrade because I was sweating profusely. I was, like, oh, this is Oh my god! Now I like a—I don't mind a hot sauce as for the sake of being hot, but I also like something that has flavor to it. Yes, like that's what—I mean, that's that's my flavor. Like, if I get wings, I gotta get that like some that are called Gold Rush. It's like honey, hot honey or something like that. Like, I love like hot barbecue honey mix wings of some sort. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't understand. It, it bothers me a lot. Some people take hot sauce as a challenge to just see like how much capsaicin can we contain in this bottle, and like. Mm -hmm. It's a sauce, though. It has to taste good. You don't impress me if you if you burn my mouth. Like I've had a hot sauce that like blistered my tongue on contact. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't mm -hmm. taste good, though, like why do I give a shit? Like I can just burn my tongue with a cigar if I want to. Okay, you gotta oh, sure. give me a reason to put this on my food. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it, I'm all about flavor. I mean, I I like to cook. I like I think cooking's fantastic. Like I just love doing stuff like that. But it's just like I want to make my own hot sauces, and I'm gonna try to do experimenting while I'm uh, taking my little hiatus from work. You know. 
when you get your first one that you're proud of, um, I'll buy a bottle off of you. I sure. I would love to try it. Um, I think that's something super cool. Uh, I've never really considered doing it myself, mostly because I will touch my eye. I know I'll touch mm -hmm. my eye like a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> so, fantastic. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead. Uh, you ready to go into some current events now? Yeah, yeah, please lay it on me. All right, fantastic. So, first current event is, and I'll go first. Uh, so, yesterday, the U.S. military forces, along with Jordanian forces, launched strikes against Iranian forces located in both Iraq and Syria. According to Reuters, 85 targets belonging to Iran's Revolutionary Guard and the militias that are backing them suffered, as, hot, as of right now, about 40 losses. The primary targets were command and control centers, intelligence facilities, weapons storage facilities that mostly is occupied by Iran's forces and the militias that support them. As of right now, Biden is drawing a lot of criticism from both the right and the left. The left, while not entirely the left now, I'm not talking about everybody on the left, are being very critical of Biden because they say he's supporting genocide of the Palestinians in Gaza. And now he's going to try to start another conflict against more Muslim people with Iran and kick off another round of conflicts in Iraq and Syria, which we've already dealt enough with Iraq and Syria. Um, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin insists that a long, drawn-out conflict is not in the cards right now. It's not the end goal. It's just to take out primary targets that uh, Iran is involved with. Um, Iran says this was a huge mistake, and this is going to lead to further conflicts between the two countries. The right, however, has a different way of why they're upset about this. They're saying that Biden is weak, and he's only launching his attacks in the hopes of saving his presidency for re-election because they always talk about how he's the worst president of all time. They insist if Trump was in office, Iran never would have attacked our troops, which is not true, actually. Iran launched multiple attacks against our troops. As a matter of fact, after an attack that took place in Iraq, um, there were so soldiers that were suffering from uh, TBI from the explosions, essentially, that they were getting launched against. And But he downplayed it, of course. Uh, and people are saying that we are now a weaker nation because Biden has taken a week to respond from this. Yet some people on social media thinking that Biden took a week to respond – uh, because they think he was going to give the Iranians a chance to evacuate all their personnel, which <laughs> wouldn't be the case. So my personal assessment about this is regardless of what he would or would not do, Biden was going to get blamed, sort of like Ukraine and Russia. If we didn't support Ukraine, we would look weak. If we did support Ukraine, we look weak. With yeah. Israel and Gaza, if we don't support Israel or Gaza, we look weak. He looks weak kind of deal, right? Now, the reason why he is more likely to wait a week is simply because this is a very, very difficult decision because the one thing that he's going to get called out for is for being a warmonger because you'll hear people on the right saying, well, under Trump, we had world peace, which isn't true. Under Trump, all these countries were kept in check, which isn't true. And they say under Trump, like this never would have happened. Well, there's no way of you to know these things, right? But the thing is, a decision like this, it's going to take some time. I'd much rather somebody take a week to decide something like this instead of just boom, just launch your attacks right away because you don't know have all the intelligence you don't know what the whole full story is we don't know where the rockets came from we don't know like who's supplying stuff like this it, it, stuff like this it takes time to gather intelligence i'd much rather prefer a more measured response instead of somebody that's just like yep let's just go like as soon as we get attacked just launch attacks like right away because you don't have the full story first now some people say well that's a weak way to look at things no 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 i i prefer a more measured response essentially now, decisions like this cannot be figured out in like an irrational sort of, you know, short amount of time. Now, again, when it comes down to foreign policy, a good friend of mine. Now, if if people, uh, if your viewers have ever like, are they are interested in geopolitics, I highly recommend the Redline podcast because uh, my my friend that actually runs that podcast, that's his specialty is geopolitics. He's like a he lives down in Australia, but he explained to me like when it, and when he did his Syria episode. He explained like how when it comes down to decisions like that are foreign policy related, it's not best case scenario, worst case scenario. It's not like what's our best case, worst case. It's option A or option B. Kind of like, you know, taking you back to the World War II days where you had option A, nuke Japan, option B, invade the mainland, option C, you know, demonstrate the power of the nuclear capabilities on a abandoned island, stuff like that. That's kind of like how geopolitics is. It's not a best case, worst case. It's just like option A. Or option B. It seems cold, but that's just kind of like how you have to approach these things because, you know, when you make decisions like this, you, yeah, you might be person, you might be like, you know, uh, emotionally invested in it, but at the same time, you have to come at this from like a clear mind, essentially. Now, I don't know where this is going to take us as far as like the long game. 
I don't know if Iran's got like, okay, you know what? We screwed up. We never should have launched those attacks, but I don't think it's the case because, you know, I'm not talking about the people of Iran. I'm talking about their government. Like their government is really, really corrupt. But um, I don't know where this is going to go, I, and I don't know how long this is going to be drawn out. I just think that, you know, no matter what Biden does, he's going to be looking weak, essentially. And then Trump's going to be like, oh, you see, see what happens when I'm not in office. This guy is actually launching attacks. He, I had world peace in the that's not the case. It, it, it's really not the case. And I know people are going to say, well, what about the $6 billion that he sent Iran? Okay, first things first, all those funds have been frozen. They're still frozen in Qatar. But then you'll hear people say, oh, money is fungible. I mean, it, it, this goes to show that they hear these buzzwords and they just repeat them without truly understanding what they mean. So, uh, Drazi, go ahead and give me your thoughts about what's going on right now. Uh, so you covered a lot of stuff there. So first I want to say that um, no matter what um, – we have to respond. We have to respond militarily. Like that's what looking weak is. Period. If somebody, uh, if somebody does something like this and we do nothing, this is going to actually say like uh, we, we're okay with you doing this. Like this is a sign of approval. That to me is like the only real way to quantify weakness. Um, anybody who's saying that uh, a strike of this, I, I would say this is a fairly sizable strike, um, is a sign of weakness. All you're really telling me is that you want more blood. Um, the purpose shouldn't be about blood. It should be about securing our interest, period. It should be about um, letting them know, hey, you can't do this. If you do, there's going to be consequences, and those consequences are going to be uh, of a military nature. We're not just going to sanction you. Uh, we're going to, you know, fuck you up a little bit. And I think that's fine. Like, it's it's not something that I – I don't like it. I don't love it, but I understand the necessity of this Um it's it's like if somebody puts you in check and you just don't even respond. Like it's not it's not a legal move. You have to respond to it. Um, Absolutely, you're one hundred percent correct that people will always find like you know I don't even want to say just Biden. I think that any president who's in a situation like this is going to face criticisms on either side because on uh, like we're kind of like I don't want to go to war and like I want I want more blood. Like on like these are the two sides that it's usually going to get divided on, and so you're never going to be able to make uh people happy about it because they have very strong ideas about what you wanted uh, about what they want to see when things like this happen but we don't have all the information we only know what is pertinent for us to know we only know what is going to be the least amount given to us to justify the action so it's a little bit um out of pocket to make really large claims about something like this <clears throat> um i also think that biden has gotten more shit than any other it doesn't matter what he does uh everybody's gonna jump on his ass uh, it's crazy to me. It's super crazy to me. Uh, sure. if, if you're going to blame him for gas prices going up, then, uh, I, I probably don't really care about any other criticisms that you have. I think that's just emotional and they're not based on anything that's actually in reality. So there's, there's that element of it too. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what the alternative options are. Like, uh, I think that you should probably... Respond militarily. You should use the minimum amount of force necessary to um, provide the security that we need to have. And that's about it. That's, I mean, I don't see any reason to think that that wasn't the case. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, the thing is, like, I, I'm a firm believer that, yeah, obviously, you're not going to, there's no perfect solution to this. You're going to have issues, regardless of how people feel about this. And when it comes down to, like, People say, oh, well, you know, I don't want my son, my son, and daughter to war. Well, honestly, nobody wants to go to war. War is a terrible thing. Like when I joined the military, I didn't expect that I would go to war. I, I joined – my fourth day basic training was September 11th, 2001. I wasn't expecting to go to war, and but yet it happened. That's what happened, and I spent – you know, throughout my entire – I went to Iraq four times and <laughs> Afghanistan once, right? Now, most people, oh, that's it. Well, that's just, that's, that comes with the, the territory, essentially. Yeah, granted, we don't want to send our sons and daughters off into there. But at the same time, it's just like, what are you going to do in this situation? Now, we are responding to attacks directly done to us, right? To not do anything would be worse. And, you know, you got people that are complaining about all oh, the supply chain issues. We got supply chain issues in this country. Well, the Houthi rebels are attacking supply chain ship, ships, essentially. Yeah. And if we do nothing, that's just going to, escalate things further then you're going to worry about you know well i didn't get my you know stuff from cambodia so now what am i going to do next kind of deal it's just it's really really just it, it's really hazy territory and it, it's easy for people to say oh well you know he should have done this we should have been like well, what response do you think would be better i'm not the one that sits in the situation room 
Now, there are times like where, and I hate to say this, where, you know, Donald Trump, when he launched the attack against uh, Soleimani, right? A lot of people were very critical about that. I initially was like, why did we launch an attack against an Iranian general? Come to find out that, you know, there was a reason for that. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Now, there was a time like where they were, where they were actually going to get ready to send in an airstrike. There was a book that I listened to called uh, The Divider, and they talked about in the Situation Room where Trump was going to launch an attack against Iran, like in their country essentially. But at the last minute, he was called off of this attack, and the only person that was really upset about that was his former national security advisor, John Bolton. He was the only person that was really upset about it, but that guy's a a dying chicken hawk in my opinion. And it's not so much that like he – the reason I call people chicken hawks is because – while he did serve in the military, he joined the reserves to d- deliberately not be sent into Vietnam, essentially. But everybody else is like, whoa, whoa, let's not launch any attacks. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Now, all these attacks that have taken place like in Iraq and Syria are places that we already have a foothold in. Now, granted, the people of Syria and Iraq are a little pissed off at us because they feel like, well, wait a second. Have you guys done enough damage already? Yeah, I, I, I get where they're coming from. I totally understand. There's a lot of things that happened in iraq that are really screwed up however i would love for the iraqi people to get involved in this but it's the fact that iran launched these attacks we still have somewhat of a foothold in there i feel like we have to respond essentially i mean to not respond would send an even worse message i mean that's just my personal opinion that is um yeah so uh i wrote i wrote down three things uh i i forgot to mention the Trump the Trump had world peace thing and just real quick just because you know mm-hmm. obvious I just want to point out obviously none of these drinks are alcoholic because Twitch wouldn't allow that uh just real yeah, quick that is true yeah. um so they they just they're, they're the same thing just non-alcoholic versions uh Trump had world peace quote quote the reason why things are so chill is because COVID what are you gonna do are you gonna send out your troops and then have half of them be unable to perform and then get like shot like no this is COVID COVID accounts for a ton of the peace that we had um, and mm-hmm. then trying to economically recover from that. Like, who really had money to uh, throw out their military to do um, a bunch of nonsense that you don't really have all this extra capital to do? Everybody was holding onto their dollar as tightly as possible, governments included. Um, sure. Because all the spending they had to do, they had to do. Um, yeah. The idea that haven't we done enough damage already? This is irrelevant when something new happens. You can't look at the past like, haven't you done enough? Like, we thought so. That's why we stopped. And now we're responding to new shit. If these mm-hmm. if these um, uh, countries are as concerned about that as they say that they are, you would think that they would invest a little bit more into their own security to make sure that um, we're not having to go over there. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. If this is something that you're actually concerned about, um, post hoc uh, bitching about it doesn't really seem like the thing that's going to uh, fly. We have made an example many, many times, of how we respond to things. And it seems pretty much in tow with it. Uh, I mean, if anything, you should be worried that we're going to respond even heavier. America is not exactly known for being super chill about shit. Which brings me to the ships. The biggest conflicts this world has ever seen that America has been a part of has been because somebody fucked with our boats. Or a Mm -hmm. boat of our ally. If America has something in the water, there's no fucking around and finding out, you know. The entire world is on notice about what happens when a boat that, even if it's even if it doesn't belong to me, if I'm given my go-ahead on that boat and you fuck with it, we will rain down unholy terrors that you've never seen before. World War yeah. II, uh, Vietnam, uh, World War I, all boats. Like, don't, do not fuck with America when it comes to boats, period. Everybody knows. If you didn't know then um, you've been asleep and I have no idea what you're doing uh, speaking for the government to begin with. This is the most given uh, uh, out of all of our uh, foreign policies, the most blatant and well-known should be that you do not fuck with boats that America uh, cares about, period. Um, Whether I think that that's great that we've always done that is irrelevant. It's a fact of the matter that you, you people will die if you fuck with our boats. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, the only one that I'm going to push back on is like the Gulf of Tonkin because they actually came back and said, yeah, that didn't actually happen. <laughs> Sorry, you know. <laughs> sure, yeah, but we the justification yeah, we gave was boats I, because I everybody knows boats. That That's what yeah, I mean, absolutely. though. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. You know, I was uh, That was like the only real pushback. But no, you're 100% correct. The Lusitania was a good example of that, essentially. But like, especially nowadays, because 
I actually did some research on this because initially I was going to get out of the army back in 2008 or after my fourth deployment to Iraq. I was going to go into like maritime security because I found out oh. that there was like a huge, I mean, I'm terrified of water, but I was thinking dollar signs. That's what I was thinking about though. But the reason why is because there's a lot of money involved because the Malacca Strait, the Horn of Africa, all these areas are heavily patrolled by pirates. And a lot of the cargo that they're hauling is worth millions upon millions of dollars. Just think about the money that you can make off of Maritime. Now, it's easy for me to say these things, but I'm just glad I didn't go into it because I'm like, uh, no thanks, honestly. But it's just like there's yeah. a lot that plays into it because especially nowadays, a lot of attacks have been taking place out on the waters. And like, you know, more ships are trying to find ways to protect themselves. But the Houthi rebels are essentially like causing damage and they're like trying to raid these vessels. Why? Because whatever you can haul out of there and like not only the cargo can you take advantage of, but also the, the hostages, the amount of money. How much is this country willing to pay for these hostages? There's a lot that plays into it. And you m nailed it correctly as far as like, oh, well, if you mess with our stuff, we're going to respond essentially. And, you know, that's why I'm saying – you know, it, people say, oh, I don't want I don't want this war to happen. Well, OK, so far there isn't a war. This is action that every president has taken part in. Not every act is a declaration of war. Every president has the authority and they don't have to. They just have to let Congress know in a certain amount of time. This is what we're doing. This is how we're responding. I mean, that's there's no other way to look at it, essentially. Uh, yeah. Um, part, part of the reason why I think it's so appropriate to respond so strongly is because when something happens on the water, the response time and the ability to gather accurate, uh, information is very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. if it's on land, you can, you can mobilize people and get over there pretty quick given the number of embassies, but it's on the water. Um, one, it makes you a very easy target because there isn't anybody around you. Um, so, sure. Uh, the idea that it's super essential to protect that, which is vulnerable. And also you have to come with a powerful response because um, of all the things. It's it's very expensive to perform a military operation uh, after something like this on the water because of the intelligence, because of, uh, I mean, like things like fuel, getting the right people in the right places. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it logistics-wise. It's, it's, this isn't a typical military operation uh, by, by cost or like by measures you have to take any stretch. And uh, I know what you mean about um, how lucrative it can be being in the military on the water i tried three different times to be in the coast guards and uh, i used to never get a call back i'd uh roommate a guy who lived in my duplex was a coast guard if you're going to be in the military that's the way to go man like you have nothing to do for most of the time and if you do do something you're doing something super cool you're saving people from drowning or like you're um inspecting a ship uh and if you find something you're like you know, a huge drug bust like people are gonna call you here like doing stuff on the water for the military is, is is pretty damn cool as long as you're not in like super pirate heavy waters that shit gets pretty dangerous although like we're, we're talking about like you're playing chess and they're playing checkers but still you can still get got <laughs> yep I we, we tend to, like, give the Coast Guard shit, but I tell you what, though. The Coast Guard has some of the most... Those snipers are some of the most well-trained because, like, you got to be able to shoot a target that's bobbing up and down in the water, and it's just... Those guys have some incredible skill. I got to give credit where it's due. The Coast Guard, those are some, like... Like, I remember I saw a video of, like, a Coast Guardsman, you know, stopping, like, a cartel boat over the water. That dude hops out on the fucking submarine and starts beating on the freaking hull until they get the door open. It's like, that dude has the largest set of balls I have ever seen. Like, that guy is like, holy shit, this guy is incredible. Like, most people wouldn't do – I wouldn't do something like that. You know what I mean? I, I don't even claim to be a badass. But that guy, he went out there and jumped on that submarine and started beating on the huddle until they opened it up. I was like, wow, dude. That it's because the last are... three weeks was nothing but paperwork. He's ready to do something, dude. Oh, bent up. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they also let you live, they let you live at home. They pay for your house and your car. It's insane. If you're going to go in the military, oh, wow. Coast Guards is, uh, whenever you have to do something crazy, it's cool. Uh, it's, it, it's going to create a good story. And otherwise you're just chilling and they pay you so good. It's crazy. Not to detract too far off from it, but. No, 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 no it's fine. I mean, I'm just, I'm not much of a swimmer. That's why I went army. I was going to go in the air force, but I went army instead. So, but, um, but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, did you have any other thoughts about this topic or are you ready to move on to your topic? Um, no, I think, I think that pretty much covers it. The only thing that I'll add is that, um, uh, it's not just, it's not just military stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Biden has gotten, like, he's going to get shit for, even if he did everything the way people wanted to people, uh, he has gotten more undue criticism 
than any president I've seen in my entire lifetime. And I've seen Obama get shit for not having a lapel, for wearing a tan suit, for wearing a helmet when he rode a bicycle. If you if yep. you're alive, you're weak to Republicans. Period. So I, yeah. I just wanted to tack that at the end because it's um this has been impressive to me, well, and I've seen some shit. <laughs> Well, it's funny because, like, anytime people, like, give Biden shit because he fell off a bicycle, I was like, show me Trump on a bicycle. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah. Let me just see Trump on a bicycle. I want to see Trump doing some level of physical fitness that doesn't involve golfing. I'll wait. You know. Does golfing count as physical fitness? I don't know. I'm not a, much of a golf fan. I think golf is boring as hell. So, but. Um, why I'll go to the driving range. Golf? Yeah. I mean, some people enjoy it, though. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, as a stress reliever. I mean, I, I get it. But uh, why don't you go ahead and give us your first uh, current event there, Drowsy? Sure. Um, oh, my God. I'm so bad with names. Let me uh, – I just got to check the dude's name. Okay. Uh, oh, I, ta I talked to you about it. So I can just scroll up. Uh, Ron DeSantis. Okay. That's who I thought it was, too. Damn it. I See, I just don't trust myself. because Ron DeSantis uh, gave a speech, uh, and the point of his speech was that we're going to be strong against um, lab-grown meat because, and I quote, we need meat. <clears throat> I was so outraged at this because, one, um, the idea that you're going to try to stymie this technological advance that, honestly, if, if there's anything that can, like, save us from global warming and a bunch of other massive issues that we face, hunger, uh, pollution, uh, it's going to be lab-grown meat. Animal agriculture is responsible for, uh, like, 23% of greenhouse gases. It takes up uh, almost 30% of the usable landmass in the world. This is an answer to a ton of our problems. And... Being a vegan, I think it's a great way to get people to um, not be able to say, like, well, I, I just like I like how this tastes. I'm not willing to give it up. You don't have to give it up anymore. You can have something that never was uh, tortured or put in bad conditions. Uh, we have no reason, once we get this industry going full, for any animal to have to live the kind of terrible lives that they do uh, in these industrial farm uh, facilities. And everything about it's good. And for him to stand against it because we need meat... I think the real answer is is that he's worried about the jobs that will be lost in the slaughterhouses. Um, and being a not very intelligent uh, Republican guy that he is, uh, I th I'm sure that he realizes that the uh, lowest educated and the most disadvantaged people in the world are the ones who work at slaughterhouses. Tyson has a guy whose job is to read all the paperwork for em new employees to them because they have such a high illiteracy rate. In the UK, they have to force prisoners to work at slaughterhouses. And these are the kind of people that are going to be really mad at him if they lose their jobs. Um, so I think that it's just a, um, I think that he's a hack and he's only doing this because he wants to secure himself a position. He doesn't give a shit about um, bettering the world. He doesn't give a shit about uh, any of the animals. He just wants to make himself look good to uh, his constituents, despite the fact that in the long term, it's going to hurt them. And I hate it. I hate him for it. There's a lot of reasons I don't like Ron DeSantis for <laughs> This one is, I think it's an absurd um, policy to look at because, you know, there are so many things he could do to better his state. This is not one of them, honestly, because so <clears throat> as somebody that, you know, like when I worked OTR and regional, I drove by like I tried to avoid like looking into the trucks, the cattle trucks that drove by because mm -hmm. like it's just it's just I get the images in my head. This is somebody that's an omnivore. Like I eat meat I, and stuff like that, you know. I get why people like choose the lifestyle. It's just me. I'm just compelled kind of deal. But it's just like I've actually looked into research on these things. The way animals are treated in slaughterhouses, it affects the way the meat is. Let alone the fact that, you know, I'm very empathetic towards animals. I like animals essentially. And it's slaughterhouses are horrible. And it's not just Ron DeSantis that is like, you know, yay, slaughterhouses. It's Sarah Huckabee Sanders of Arkansas. She actually – took away restrictions where you can actually hire children to work in slaughterhouses, essentially. I mean, yeah, like we got like 14 year old kids working in slaughterhouses. Did you hear about that? No, oh, that's yeah. yeah. I don't even believe that's in hell, but you should, there should be a hell created. You should go to it. It's the worst yeah. job for your mental health period. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. I mean, like we were watching a, uh, what was it? My wife and I were watching a documentary called uh, uh, food Inc. And they took us inside of a slaughterhouse and it was like, Oh, like we had to like mute it because I didn't want to see any more of it. Really, like I had to look away. And you know, there's some things I can stomach. Animals, for some reason, I just no, I can't stomach that really. And it's it's kind of weird, but it's like, you know, my wife's vegetarian. It's 
strictly based upon choice, and I get it. I understand it, you know. And I feel like there are better ways. And I think, like, lab-grown meat is not a big deal. The only thing I'm concerned about is, like, I'm, I'm big about, like, GMOs. Like, if the food we eat is actually good for our bodies, right? That's the only concern I really have is, like, if lab-grown meat is actually going to be helpful for us. If it is, by all means, go for it. I'm, I'm a cat. Oh, if the product is good and beneficial, I am all for it. Let's let's go. But you know, like um, like my wife being a vegetarian, I bought like you and I had this conversation on Discord. Like I buy the Beyond Beef, I buy the Impossible Beef. I think it tastes good. I've made That's... it many many times. It's no different, honestly. To me, it's no different. If I was told I had to eat that for the rest of my life, I actually wouldn't be upset about it. And um, there's actually like um, in, up in Bay City, there's actually a restaurant called uh, D'Angelo's. They mm. their primary source is called uh, it, it's like vegan food. And she actually had a hamburger from there. And she's like, I really can like Burger King's one thing, but like she ate this one. She's like, this is like the best non meat burger she's ever had. Because like uh, when she joined the army, she had to kind of get away from the vegetarian lifestyle. And uh, so it was kind of like wow, this is actually like really good. And I actually tried a little bit. It's really good. But they also had like a uh, vegan chicken pizza. It was delicious. It was delicious. Like I, I'm all about it. But um, going back to Ron DeSantis, he's only doing this because, you know, there's a lot of people that do not understand what goes into our food. And they don't understand that like there's a lot of harm that comes into it because – when you put animals in certain conditions, right, they're put in conditions that where they're right next to each other. They're swimming in feces. I'm not trying to upset anybody here, but like, and then the stresses they go under, it actually affects their bodies and it affects the, and it taints the meat essentially. And I feel like this could be a way to like really mitigate that little on the fact that, you know, like you said it, global warming, people say, oh, global warming, climate change is a hoax. <clears throat> there are people that dedicate their entire lives to these studies and they say this is not a hoax. This is a very, very, very real thing, essentially. I mean, it, it, the proof is in the pudding. But you've got these idiots that say, well, I did five minutes of research, and one guy says this is not true. It is true, essentially. But, you know, a lot of these people are partisan hacks. Let's put it that way. <laughs> they, they don't believe in this shit. They don't believe that, you know, global warming is a real thing. It really is. I don't even believe them. I think that they know it is, but they think that th they know that their constituents don't believe it, so they pretend not to. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And the fourteen-year-old thing, I almost cried, dude. Um, uh, Perspective Philosophy has a like a mini doc he made about it, and I've read reports of people who have like infiltrated uh, slaughterhouses and worked there. It is people develop pits. You're in the military. Do you know what pits is? PTSD. It's a form of PTSD where mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like PTSD and DID at the same like it's, it's basically DID triggered from PTSD. It's where um you eventually essentially your brain develops a different persona to deal with the trauma of you doing gruesome violent things. Somebody else. So uh, ex military gets it, police officers get it, and slaughterhouse workers get it, and um. Yeah. There will be people that said, like, when my boss yelled at me when I was on the killing floor, if he would have walked down next to me, I would have slit his throat. Because mm -hmm. you're, you have to separate your humanity in order to kill these things that you see are very much wanting to live. You can yeah. try to macho it up all you want, but your brain still understands that you're doing something that is very disconnected from your humanity. And the idea that 14-year-olds yeah. are being subjected to that. It's going to yep. ruin them for life. The amount yep. of drug addiction and domestic violence among slaughterhouse workers is among the highest across any professions. Um, mm -hmm. And it's one thing I still think I think it's terrible to put anybody there, especially like I said, most of the people have no other options. They are extremely yeah. undereducated. Um, they have very they have very little options. Or sometimes we even force them because we can't get people who want to do it. The idea that kids. Uh, are allowed to work there. And I'm assuming that that bill does not allow them to work just anywhere when they're 14. It's specifically for the meat industry. It, it's it's any job, essentially. Oh, okay. The yeah. Well, I like that I a like... lot better. But well, still. It's, it's to sort of navigate. It, it's to kind of like it's kind of navigate around because there was a uh, uh, like a child like that. Was like I think he was like 13 or 14 that was working there and he got injured. And then they were about ready to get slammed with the lawsuit. Then they just quickly passed this bill through. That's what I read at least. But it's just, you know, my my. Tell me, she doesn't work for them then. She doesn't. 
She doesn't. She's doing this because she's trying to appease to them because that's their voter base. But like when we watched when we watched this documentary, Food Inc., we found out something very significant. Actually, was that the majority of the people that work in these slaughterhouses are migrants. You know, people that are here without a work visa, essentially. But it's because that they can pay them under the table. And like Smithfield Foods is a great example. Smithfield Foods actually utilized immigrants, you know, migrant workers. And then after they fulfilled their purpose, they would call INS like, hey, we've got some migrants here. And then they would get them deported. And that cycle would repeat over and over again. Oh, we didn't know these people were migrants, essentially. I mean, it's it's a cycle that continues. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, I, I can't even believe that something like this just – but. It, it's easy to pay people under the table, especially when you can prove, hey, these people aren't – they're not real humans. They're not real Americans. We can pay them under the table and not have to worry about a damn thing essentially. Well, and I understand this is going to be triggering for some people to hear me say, but when you have an industry that is – entire uh, product is the result of torture and death – of innocent beings. I you can't expect them to be moral. I'm never surprised when I hear about the terrible things they do. There's a reason why it's illegal in many states to uh, film inside uh, what happens inside of slaughterhouses. Because yeah. they pay very, very good money to politicians to uh, benefit them because they need that. They need the public to not see. They need to have people who aren't going to have a voice in the public square to work for them. Um, yeah. It's, this is, these are essential elements to keep this business going, and there's a reason why there will never be the kind of ethical uh, farming techniques that people who even eat meat who want to see them put into place uh, call for. It's because it's not profitable, and at the end of the day, um, they're fine mm -hmm. with um, making money from blood. That's that's all it is. They don't care. They don't care if it's the humans that are working there, which injuries are also insanely high. The 14 year old things really, really set my head spinning. I had no idea. I'm yep. I, getting I, I, very hopeful about this in the future. I, I looked into it and I was like, I was just, my mind was just, what? But I don't really expect somebody like Sarah Huckabee Sanders to really be a moral person, essentially. I mean, it's just, that's my personal opinion. Cause, but like, uh, I, I know that there are not every industry is going to have a perfect system as far as like, you know, you know, current farming methods, as far as like animals and whatnot. There's no such thing as a perfect system, but I do believe that, like, if you take care of an animal and stuff like that, and then you, like, you humanely, you know, slaughter it, your meat's going to taste a little bit better, and plus it's had a better life. Like, this whole, so, I don't know. I don't know what humanely slaughter means. Like, uh, how would you, how would you prefer that somebody yeah. humanely slaughter, like, your grandmother? Yeah. There's no such thing, yeah. but no, I, I understand I the sentiment. I, I have to say it. It's, uh, my yeah. brain will scream at me if I don't say it, but yeah. Um, it, it can't ever happen because all they care yeah. about is money. But the, the idea that um, a Republican uh, leader would endorse this shows me something that I only learned from COVID. When I seen, because um, I, uh, I guess you know what rural Michigan is like. One of the things that I always yeah. thought was really good about them, heavily Republican, and they care about their community. That's what they always talk about, how important their yeah. community is to them, how important the locals are to them. And then when I seen sure. COVID hit and nobody gave a shit about taking any precautions to protect the people around them. Um, mm -hmm. this is what I'm seeing on a much, uh, more elevated scale. She doesn't care about children. Republicans say they care about children, but if you're letting them work in the worst job imaginable, where it's going to destroy their mind for the rest of their lives, I don't believe you that you care about children. Yeah, I agree. It's, 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 it's a really tricky scenario. I mean, it's just like, this is why I like, I have a huge problem. Like, I guess for some reason. For some reason, like, I guess somebody in my chest says they can't hear me at all. At all. That's weird. That's odd. Okay. But anyway, like, uh, I, I really feel like, you know, yeah, maybe I used the wrong term, like, humanely slaughter. But, like, I, I look at it like this, right? It's just, like, there are humane ways to take care of an animal, I guess, you know? But it's just, like... Better's better is better. I'll always like, give you that. Yeah. yeah. I always... I mean, that's the, I'm always for doing better. Uh, yeah. I understand that people aren't going to behave the way I want them to, but I'll always mm -hmm. celebrate better. Full stop. Sure. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I think the way Ron DeSantis is going about it is completely the wrong way, but he's only doing it to benefit others. Not really because it's the right way to go about things. It's just because, well, I'm just going to do this because I think it's right. It's, it's not because it's doing what's right. It's not because he's going to protect anybody's job. This is a totally different market. It's something he's not aware about. It's not something he cares about. 
it's, it's kind of like those that don't want to go back to green energy because they feel like green energy is going to like destroy jobs. It actually green energy jobs actually are one of the most profitable jobs right now. It's just people are not educated enough about green energy jobs. So they're going to be upset about it because, Oh my God, they're going to take away my oil jobs. Okay. Listen, the oil industry is not going anywhere for a while because petroleum products make plastics. They make other things like it's not going any fucking where for a while. Okay. It's time for people to grow up. If there's a better way to make things, if there's a better way to make a better system, like, especially like if you do lab room meat, as long as it works, as long as it tastes fine, I don't care. I am all for it. I will deviate away from like buying like regular meat, you know, but it's just, that's just my personal opinion. So. Yeah. Um, I think that there's, it basically comes down to like, after that point, there's no excuse. And it might be mm -hmm. the case too, that you said it might just be in a, uh, an appeal to people's emotions uh, because people don't like change. Uh, the, you're right. Uh, green energy is extremely profitable and uh, replacing oil jobs. There could be nothing better for people working on, uh, especially people who work on oil rigs, insanely dangerous profession. You, yeah. if, if you really cared, you would be more concerned about investing in these newer technologies and reeducating people so that the way they can get these better paying way, way lower risk jobs uh, to where they don't have to worry about losing fingers uh, and limbs or their life. Um, not sure. a lot of people are going to die building windmills. Yeah. Uh, you, you'll hear people say things like, oh, well, they're killing the whales. I, I have yet to see any evidence <laughs> about that. O oil doesn't harm the uh, uh, ocean life at all. No, it doesn't. I mean, that, that's a whole different topic, though. That's like, that's a, I, I could talk about the oil industry and things like that. It's irresponsibilities for days. But um, uh, you ready to move on the next topic or is there anything you want to cover? Oh, OK. Um, so my next current event. So Anna Kasparian, uh, co-host of the Young Turks. I'm a big fan, big fan of the Young Turks. I've been following them for years. Um, has been taking more heat from leftists on Twitter. This time she's taking heat for saying the following. Uh, now, I'm going to quote this about an assault that took place when migrants attacked a New York police officers who are now out without bail, the bail and have fled the city. So I quote from Anna Kasparian, consider the lack of resources for migrants, considering the fact you have a situation in which there isn't enough shelter and you have migrants sleeping outside. Can we deport the ones who are engaging in this kind of behavior and this kind of crime? Like. One of them has already gotten arrested twice for assaulting employees at retail stores. And then you have the surveillance footage of them kicking cops in the head as the cops are trying to detain the other guy. Why? What are we doing? So they get arrested, and then they get let out. No bail because of New York City, of course. She then went on to ask those on the left to not have a knee-jerk reaction, keyword knee-jerk reaction, which they did, of course. She went on to say, these are not people you need to provide cover for. These are people who are in the country, are in the country claiming asylum. They don't have a right to be here. It is a privilege to be able to take advantage of our asylum program and be able to claim asylum, claim that you're here because of whatever reason. I don't know what exactly, which reason they gave their asylum claim. And you get to have your case adjudicated in front of a judge. But if you're causing all sorts of chaos and if you're assaulting police officers, like the idea we're not even having a conversation about, immediately deporting them is ridiculous. Deporting them, I'm sorry. She then continued to go on, but... You know, now I'm going to kind of go over the blowback that she received from this. So she asked for people to not have a knee jerk reaction, but the knee jerk reaction is exactly what she got on social media. Now, for example, one comment was made by the Twitter handle uh, Karima Free Palestine. Anna Kasparian seems to have forgotten that seeking asylum is an internationally recognized human right, not a privilege. Another person by the name of Adol said, Just bleach your hair and go over to Fox News already, Anna. Then Comrade John Kent on Twitter said, Anna Kasparian is a right racist right winger who hate poor people. Hate, not hate, hate poor people. And there are many others. But you, of course, had those on the right who said things like based, which is one of my, I hate that term so much. It just get, sends chills down my spine when people do that. I mean, I'm not going to tell people to not say it, but it's just like it bothers me. But they say based Anna Kasparian or finally she has seen the light. You know, my topic, though, isn't about those that are on the right. I'm talking about those that are on the left. Anna Kasparian is a progressive. She has been for as long as I've seen her on TYT, and she has always taken each step separately. She knows not everyone who is claiming asylum in this country is going to commit crimes. However, just like when she said, I am not a birthing person, because there's a huge controversy where she's, 
you know, people are like women are called birthing persons. She yeah. said, I, I, I'm not a birthing person. I, I'm a woman. I felt that she was being fair about this, and she got criticism from that. Uh, she received a lot of hard criticism from this. And it seems as though if you do not step in line with everything that the left says on every issue, you're going to get called a Nazi, a fascist, a horrible human being just because you disagree on one issue. Now, this to me is a huge problem on the left. The right is just as guilty, but I'm focusing on where I predominantly vote. I vote progressive because I feel like a lot of the issues I feel are more along on the progressive side. Now, we on the left have a tendency, though, to alienate people, right? If they do not agree with everything we say, and the second you say something on the left, you get labeled everything in the book. I know because I have faced this over and over again. Like, for example, if people ask me, what are your views on LGBTQ plus stuff? Okay, so I'm a firm believer in equality for all. I believe that, you know, trans rights are human rights, the whole nine across the board. Um, abortion, I am pro-choice. You know, and, and then, but then like once people start going into other territory, it's like, uh, I don't really agree with that. Oh my God, you're a Nazi. You're a terrible human being. You should just, you know, you know, Minecraft yourself essentially. I mean, like, wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? Can I have a difference of opinion? No, you can't have a difference of opinion. You're a horrible human. It's like, this is not this is how you turn people away from your base, essentially. Now, there are people – it's fine if people disagree with Anna Kasparian, but I feel she made a lot of sense here because we all remember what happened on January 6th. We saw Capitol Police being assaulted by Trump loyalists, essentially, right? They got assaulted. I mean they, they were getting assaulted because Trump pushed this narrative that the election was being stolen from him, and these people were assaulting police officers. I think it would be more hypocritical for me not be critical of migrants that are coming across and assaulting our police officers and then getting off with no bail, essentially. Now, bail reform is a different topic completely, but these guys assaulted police officers, and they get off with no bail, and they fled the city. This sets a dangerous precedence because if you're willing to look away for one second, what other precedents are you saying? And again, this is not an attack on migrants that are actually trying to seek a better life. I'm talking about those that are actually coming here saying, I'm here to escape, you know, persecution. I'm here for better life for myself. And then you commit crimes. We arrest people for committing these crimes, and they they have to face the music when they do these things. But to, to think that Anna Kasparian is being attacked for this, is being attacked because she points out an objective truth, I find that insane. I find that completely insane. And I think, I just wonder, are people actually taking this in good faith, or are they just taking this personally? I mean, what are your thoughts about this? Okay, so, um, I think a lot, so a big part of what she has done wrong, in my opinion here, is when she says they're not people that, nothing she says after that matters, she's qualified, she's making certain qualifications that you need to be a person. Because I think in the United States, we typically hold the value that if you're, that uh, citizens here have certain rights, and that somehow by by luck of birth that you're afforded these base the the rights that we want uh seem to be pretty basic human decencies and it sounds i think a lot of people are going to hear that and just essentially have her uh is going to hear her essentially explain they're not people they don't deserve to have any rights this is this is not good if you're going to if you're presenting yourself as a leftist and you're in the media you need to understand what that entails you are going to face criticism of course because you know that your base doesn't agree with you here however if she took a more nuanced she's being vitriolic on purpose like she's in the media she knows what she's doing uh if you want to take a more nuanced approach say hey look we we need to make it really clear that when people are coming over here and working that um there's certain standards that um they need to be upheld because people that are coming in here, uh, not through like the naturalization process, um, we're being a lot more lenient on certain things because it's we uh, to expedite things, but we don't really know as much as we would if you became a citizen. So there's some things that are just going to be like sort of held in question. And if you do something that's illegal, it's going to call into uh question the kind of character that we didn't get to get if you would come through here through like naturalization process so my main concern is that um if we're not um having strong judicial approaches to these things it sort of sends a message to other people that you can come here and do whatever you want and we're going to be really lenient on you specifically because you're not a citizen this is a kind of argument that i think a leftist can hear 
and sympathize with. But she's not taking that approach because to me this this tells me that she wants the uh she wants the drama of it. She wants to like clout form uh farm this position that she has because she knows that her job isn't really in threat. Like same thing with the birthing person thing. I think that um if you were to talk about how it does it doesn't align with you, how you feel uncomfortable uh, with a woman being referred to as a birthing person, like I would not feel okay being called a sperm donor, or mm -hmm. or like a cub machine or something like that. that. That basically, there's a really understandable argument. Like I don't want my identity to be boiled down to my genitals, which I think is the people that would be most upset about what she said are going to be super uh, sympathetic towards. This an argument makes sense. She's not taking the time to do that, and she's riling up her own base on purpose. Obviously, purity testing has gone so far that we don't have a unified left party, and we have we have separated ourselves so much that, like, I feel like if you're not the kind of person that says, I want exactly what I want, and if I can't have that, then I'll burn the party down, uh, are going to be centrists. Like, you're just now a centrist at best if you're not one of these mm -hmm. people. And so, like, we need to chill out on that, but I think that Bad faith actors, like how Anna Kasperian appears to me by trying to blow things up and make a bigger deal by the way that you approach it, is certainly helping these kinds of things along. We need people on the left who are going to push back against things that should be pushed back and said, like, that's not actually what we stand for. They need to do it in a way that shows that they care about the party, they have a measured approach, and they understand who the people that are looking to them are. And that's, that's probably the biggest problem is that she's ignoring who the people that are looking to her for their news really are. She's taking a note out of Fox News' book on that one. They know who they're talking to. Republicans don't piss off Repub uh, Republican uh, party leaders don't piss off Republicans that much because they know who they're talking to. So, like, kind of like not really trying to push back too much, but it's like oh, when, it com when, it, when it comes – yeah, you know, but like when, when I'm talking about like – I'm talking about the people that attack the cops, right, and the fact that they got out with no bail – essentially. And then they just kind of fled and stuff like that. And even she was very specific that she's not targeting all migrants. She's just talking to these guys. These are the guys that need to get deported like right away. But she's, I just feel like she's getting attacked for that because she's not being correct in people's opinion about them. And like, you feel like she was being a bit too vitriolic or do you think she was just, you know, it was, it, yeah, I think she was being matters. as knee jerk. Do you think she's being as just as knee jerk, even though she wasn't asking other people to be knee jerk about it? Uh, I no, I actually think the opposite. I think that she took a calculated move there, and she mm -hmm. decided to go for the really uh, vitriolic rhetoric on purpose. Um, I think that she saw what happened when she did the birthing person thing, and said like, "I could use a bump. I would like to trend on Twitter today." And so she said it like that because, like I said, she's been with the Young Turks for how long now? She knows what her base is. She knows how people are yep. going to react. And to me, uh, it's like I work in IT. No matter what action I take, I know what the outcome is going to be. Um, yeah. So for me to, uh, if I'm going to have to do something that shuts down a server, and uh, I go in there, and two minutes before, and I go, just so you guys know, everything's going to get shut off, and then I go and do it, I know how these people are going to react. I know it. There's a different way that I could approach them about this to where I know that they're going to be okay with what I have to do. She knows that she can talk about this, get her exact point across in a way that's going to be okay with, uh, that people are going to be okay with how she's going to do it. Now, I don't think that everybody needs to freak out about everything either, but um, I think that she knows that they will and she's doing it on purpose. So like the purity testing is really kind of like aside from this because I think that if it wasn't like this, she wouldn't react this way. I think it's just sensationalism, honestly. I I, ha I, would, oh. I just, okay. I, I would need a strong argument to suggest that like, she's like, oh, why is everybody so mad at me? I don't understand. She understands, right? Well, the only thing I'm just wondering is, like, is there another way she could have worded this to where people would be like, oh, well, you know, I see your point of view. I mean, do you think there's probably, like, another way she probably could have worded this? Because I feel like, in this case, being direct and maybe just, like, it sounds like vitriolic or something like that, but I think she's being direct and honest about it. And sometimes some people just can't seem to handle that at times. Like, that's – like, some people are uncomfortable with truths. Like, I – there are some things that I will hear – that I'm like, really? I'm like, I, I don't know how to take it at first. But then, like, when I kind of look into it, and I'm like, you know what? I now understand where you're coming from. It makes more sense that way. Because, like, he, here's here's a topic I, you know, not I'm not trying to deviate too much, but like, when like the topic of like white privilege comes up, I used to deny this. I used to say white privilege is not a thing because you know I didn't grow up privileged. 
but it just took me years to finally figure out what that term actually means. And I sure. feel like the same and I feel like the same thing could be said about like the way Anna responded to the situation because some people just feel like she's attacking the wrong people and or they're just she's just saying things be, and people are like, "Oh my god, they're being too reactionary because she's attacking all migrants." Or they're just saying, "Oh, well, you know, uh certain people like people get attacked all the time. Why aren't we doing focus this thing this much on people in this country?" Well, the thing is, we do focus on people like that in this country, but yet in this case, I feel like, you know, it's it's so it's a grabbing so much attention because of what's going on on the southern border that people are just like this is grasping more attention and i just feel like she's saying what i feel is correct i don't feel like she's being vitriolic towards like you know migrants that are just you know sleeping on the street waiting for their court date she's talking about those that are actually assaulting our police officers assaulting retail workers assaulting people and just like i feel like they are the ones that are tarnishing the, those that came here legitimately look for now I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that there has to be a process and let's i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna like you know cut them up. i'm not gonna like you know be you know i'm not gonna pull punches with this one our system is completely fucked it's completely outdated like we have got to fix our immigration system because there are backlogs where it takes people decades to become citizens in this country and like let's say for example you've got a family the 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 patriarch and the matriarch of the family, they're doing everything they can. They have a good paying job, but they're not citizens yet. They're here on a work visa. The work visa expires because there's a backlog in the system, and they can't get the, you know their system back in time. Then they got to get deported, and the children that they gave birth to over here are American citizens, and now they're separated. I feel like the system is way outdated, and we've got to do something to make it better. And that, that's like it took me a long time to learn these things. And I'm not saying I have all the answers. This is just merely my opinion. That's why I'm saying it's like there are people that come here seeking a better life. And those that come here seeking a better life, the ones that actually want to come here and create a better life for themselves and their children. Yes, absolutely. They can stay here. Not a problem. I feel like the ones that come over here and they just raise ungodly holy hell. Absolutely. You know, they should just immediately deport and you know i'm not saying like put ankle monitors on because that's not gonna fucking work but like there's got to be a better system essentially that's just my whole argument sure so the first thing you said could she have uh said this better um yeah that was kind of what i was out like when i think the way that you say this better is that you talk about the problem and not the person um mm -hmm. because that's how you don't let it uh reverberate out to other people who haven't done anything wrong and make them feel targeted however i don't think the target of her vitriol was other migrants i think that it was her her main uh viewer base that she was targeting i think she specifically said it this way to rile them up like i said she like uh i, I haven't i haven't seen her response to the response but if she's like, uh, oh, my God, I can't believe everybody's acting like this. Like, you guys are crazy. Like, that that would just be acting, in my opinion, because she knows it's coming. She has to. And so mm -hmm. I think that's the target of the vitriol is the people that are going to care about the migrants. Not so much sure. the migrants herself, because the odds are they're probably not watching the Young Turks. They got other shit going on. In their, uh, they got other shit on their plate. Um, uh, what else did I read here? Uh, as far as like the, the system in general, like, sure. I think that if you've been here on a visa... Uh, and it expires, um, we either extend that visa automatically for you, given yeah, that there's no problems, or um, we could definitely expedite the naturalization process by going and uh, uh, spending like two hours talking to the employer, talking to their neighbors. Are they, you know, like if they've been here long enough for their visa to expire, it seems like they're providing a good for the economy. Like if you're on a visa, that means you have a job. It's really similar to what Canada has. You have to basically prove that you're going to be uh, an economically... Uh, positive force for canada in order for them to let you in so like you need like a college degree or you need to have like five years experience in a prior job but if you're on a visa we kind of check those boxes and if you have a good criminal record and all that then like just make them a citizen and it allows to free up a lot of other stuff like the people that are coming through through the naturalization process or asylum seekers we could take a lot of um we just move a lot of this out of there and uh expedite it because it's a way that it makes sense it aligns with our goals it's what we're looking for um Sure, like, I don't really have any problem with deporting people that should be deported, but I also think that when you have the kind of hate that goes on on the right, and we have we see some of the issues that we've had with ICE uh, in the last, like, 
decade. I think it's really important that if you're standing with these like pro-immigrant policies, that you are a little bit careful about how you talk. You shouldn't be, uh, what's the word? It shouldn't be ambiguous. I shouldn't have to guess about what you think about it if you're representing the uh, like the party on such a big platform. I think that sure. showing that you're taking the time to care uh, validates a lot of the, uh, is going to validate what you're actually saying. And if you just want to say it to say it, um, sure, why the fuck are you on the news, like a, a, a news, uh, internet news channel, but if you're going to say it in a way that's going to reach people and actually change their minds to move them on this position, which is probably a tougher one to do, then I think taking that time to show that you actually understand what people's concerns are and going into the nuance about it is going to be a much better way to move them to a more reasonable position that's saying that people that are here um, with limited status getting deported when they commit violent crimes, uh, they're going to hear you a lot better. And I think that if you care about something, you have a responsibility based on what I'm going off of your values that you're espousing to take it seriously and to actually aim your outcomes towards the goal that you say that you're supporting. Um, like, uh, example that I use a lot is that if you're a vegan and you debate people online to get dunks on them, you're a bad person. You're saying that I care about this. This is important to me. And the way that I'm going to do that is by making people fucking hate me and making enemies. Mm -hmm. You're a bad person. You're not helping your goal. So if she's going mm -hmm. to, uh, try to, uh, talk about this in a way that's going to hurt her goal, then I don't really know what her values are anymore. Her values certainly aren't trying to get people to understand uh, her position. It's just to rile people up. And it's a problem I have on both sides. People just want to rile people up. They're not actually pushing to create change inside the hearts and minds of people that they're speaking to. And I'm, so I'm super like, tired of that. Yeah, it's more like – so what you're saying is like it's more like selling the sizzle, not necessarily the steak, right? Not No pun intended, but it's just like yeah. – you're, se you're selling the sizzle to uh, forego the steak. You, you don't yeah, – that's yeah. – yeah, yeah. It, it's what it get, it's what grabs people's attention the most. I mean, like that's what most media is nowadays. Anyway, it's just more about like it's it's sort of like why you know it, not really to kind of <clears throat> deviate too much from this topic, but like there's a reason as to why while other issues were going on in the world when the death of Anna Nicole Smith happened, that was everybody's primary focus. Why? Because mainstream media portrayed it. It's not her fault. She's dead. I mean, <laughs> she's got no control over that. But yet people are like, you know, this is what is capturing. Why? Because it's just it's it's filling up the airwaves, essentially. This is why, like, I don't like some media. It's just like I don't care about this stuff. But yet it's it's I don't care that, you know, Prince William and, and, and uh, you know, Duchess Kate bought a penguin. That's like not my biggest concern. But yet people are like, oh, my God, they bought a penguin. Oh, my God, this is amazing. It's like, no, it's not. OK, it's just a freaking penguin for crying out loud. I, mean, I see where you're coming from as far as like the hyperbolic portion or like, you know, being very, you know, sensationalism and stuff. Yes. Like, sure, you could, you could like I, I just think like so many people like are they need that to kind of like, wait, what did she just say? And then just kind of replay it. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I mean, I, I feel like the substance, I get the substance, but I understand where you're coming from as far as like, maybe the rhetoric was a bit too much. And that's why right wingers like, oh my God, look, here she comes. She's, she's coming to our side next. And why some people are like, just dye your hair blonde and go over to the Fox News. I mean, uh, if people say that she insists that she's white, then they clearly don't know who Anna It sounds like some is. Ann Coulter shit. That's why. Yeah. Uh, when you're starting off with like these are not people that at anything you say after that that sounds like an Ann Coulter line. I think that's what they're uh, latching onto. Oh yeah, I mean I I, I could see that. I mean I I can see like how somebody could take that. You know, um, do you know, like think that some people might be a bit too reactionary? Like they just oh, hear the first part. They're like they're, like they hear the first part and they just don't listen to the rest of it. It's like oh my god, she's going way off the board. Now she's a Nazi kind of deal. I mean. Now, yes. Uh, hopefully nobody. Yeah. Hopefully nobody thinks she's a Nazi because she's not. But like, it's just. I, I think that there are some people that are just. Oh my God! I can't believe this person because like, I dude, I've been accused of being a Nazi so many times. It's insanity. Like, it's like, no. <laughs> like they. Like there are people that looked up my last name. It's like, oh my God, your last name is German. I found a German. That person was a Nazi. Therefore, a e two plus two equals five. You're not. It's like, no. That's that's not how it works. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Let me just. I don't know. I mean, she, she is a public figure, and yes, she's going to have blowback. Anybody that's a public figure that's not going to get blowback. I mean, I get blowback all the time from things I see online, and I accept that. You know, I'm, I'm willing to defend my uh, points of view, though. So, 
Sure. I just think that um, so obviously people overreact. Uh, everybody's like this, but the fact that she knows that, it, it just calls into question what her intent truly is for me and uh which is why i never actually went after like the substance of the claim when i pushed back it's it's definitely about it's all about optics like this isn't like it's not like she's doing like a 200 viewer twitch stream or something like that you know she has a big audience and she, i just think that no i'm not even gonna say it that way she knows what it's going to be and i can't i feel like things like that make me not be able to trust her at all sure um That's but fair. I don't think that, um, like, I don't think she's a Nazi. I don't think any of this stuff. I think that she's somebody who's trying to uh, get some attention. Like I said, the, the number one reason that pops in my head is, like, she's probably like, how can I trend on Twitter with this story? And, like, if that's what it is, that's fine. But, like, I just, I'm always going to think that you care less about uh, the issues that you're talking about and you care more about your career, which is fine, too. But, like, I just don't take you that serious. I hear you. I hear you. Um, was there anything else you want to weigh on this topic? Or are you ready to move on to your uh, next current event? Uh, I think I covered it uh pretty good. Same here. Fire away. So um, recently, uh, Zuckerberg and some other big moguls of uh, social media came. Uh, that they uh went to uh, what did they go to? Uh, there was. They went to the Senate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to I didn't I didn't want to say the house by mistake. All right. I was just checking. Yeah. yeah. So they went to the Senate to talk about um whether they're actually um fulfilling their promise to uh keep the mental health of children in their like sites essentially. So it, it's all been kind of like vaguely talked about uh uh, uh for them. Uh, but the the idea is that social media is harming uh, children's mental health. This isn't an opinion. This isn't like some boomer thing. People saying like, well, the problems with these damn phones. Like, no, we actually have hard data that shows that the way that social media um, triggers people to engage. It's bad for adults too, but adults, we, we understand that they're allowed to make their own decisions. Kids are addicted to social media and it's causing them mental health harm. And uh, they have since promised to do something about it. And they're not. Um, and I think that, a lot of people will roll their eyes about this. Think like, well, yeah, sure. But like, you know, money and like just like loose, vague things that they don't really uh, they just don't want to deal with it. Um, since I've gotten a very good grasp on how bad social media really is, I only use Facebook for sales now. And uh, I had like dozens of people when I said I'm like I, I did the post because I'm polite, not the attention grab. You're like, oh, I'm done with Facebook and back next week. No, I said I was done with Facebook and I was really done. A lot of people are like, where am I going to get my memes from? Like, I was always on Facebook all the time. I'd probably spend like six hours on Facebook, especially if it was a work day. Because yeah. uh, that's, let's be real. Most people's time spent at work is on Twitter or Facebook or something. And sure. I was like, I just need to stop because I don't feel it. But I know this is bad for my mental health. And as an adult, I'm, I became super aware of just how many different things were going to fuck me up. We don't know what an entire generation 20 years from now who had that uh, on the development of their brains with the way that it is today is going to look like. So it is something that actually matters. This is something that we actually have to be concerned about. Um, it seems likely that there's going to be um, the same kind of problems we see with people like gambling addictions, but on a forming brain. How many 13-year-olds do you know that have a gambling problem? Almost none. Um we're seeing people whose brains are being trained in the same kind of way, but even more aggressively, they're going to turn into an adult. And we have to, we have to put it on these companies. Uh, even if you're super libertarian or whatever, if you care about your kids, you can't stop them. Like they can get, they can get a phone from their friend. They can get, get on the computer at school. We literally, it's out of our hands uh, as an overall population. And if we agree that we have to do something about it, it has to get put on these companies. And they're already showing that they're lying to us. When uh, Zuckerberg says, uh, well, we didn't really live up to our promises, like, no, you didn't on purpose because you knew you could just say that and get away with it. There has to be real ramifications for these things. Tech companies have us by the balls in every single market. Um, and if there's any that we can actually take a stand on and get people on both sides for is saying like, hey, these are our fucking kids. Let's actually uh, let's actually do something about this. Let's actually punish them. We have to hold them accountable, at least in this area. And then maybe, maybe it'll send them a message for the other 
sectors as well. But if not, at least we can get this uh, part better. Uh, I think it would be the best thing that we can do. Uh, as much as we invest in the futures uh, of our kids... Uh, I don't know how effective that's going to be if we don't get this under control. It's so much worse than people think. And everybody knows it's bad, right? There's nobody that you would say that, that you could talk to left, right. It doesn't matter. Like, well, yeah, I know what's bad. But like, what can you do? This is too hand wavy. It's too defeatist. It's it's important, in my opinion. What do you think? Do you think it's important? It's important. Absolutely. So a few things. Um I, I watched parts of that hearing, and I feel like some of the senators were not really focused on the most important issues because, like, you've got Marsha Blackburn holding Mark Zuckerberg accountable for, like, you know, posts that are made. It's like we need to think about our children when Marsha Blackburn had a school shooting in her own state, and she has done nothing to mitigate that, essentially. So this is, to me, it's nothing more than virtue signaling. I saw – I basically saw all these senators demand that Mark Zuckerberg stand up and apologize to all these families, essentially, for what happened. Um, I find that completely absurd because, like, here's the thing. I look at social media. Social media is I, – I, I, okay, I use social media all the time, and I say it's bad. But I still go to it because I'm trying to build a profile for myself, right? I also use, like, Facebook to stay in contact with family and friends, people that I've served with and stuff like that. But I don't really talk very much, but I use Twitter to build my social profile, essentially. I use Discord to talk to people when I'm, like, you know, driving and stuff like that because it, it's entertaining for me. Now, on social media, there are some of the most cruel, vile, evil, twisted people I've seen on social media. And they've sent me death threats. They said that they're going to dox me. They're going to find me. They're going to do all kinds of – they're going to Minecraft me and whatnot. They're going to do all kinds – now, me, I can take that, okay? Okay. But yeah. I'm not everybody else. There are people out there that cannot handle that. Uh, last week uh, when I had a, a topic about AI deep fakes, there was a young girl that was like 14 or 15 years old. People did deep fakes of her having sex with like other people, and people started calling her you know, slut, whore, and things like that. And it affected her so much, she committed suicide because of it essentially, and it's a horrible thing. Now, social media does need to crack down on these things. But it's nearly impossible to do so because you could crack down and you have every regulation in the book, but you're not going to be able to stop everything. And when people say, well, I blame social media, I blame Instagram, I blame TikTok, I blame all these platforms for what's going on with my child. This is the question I ask them. You as a parent, are you keeping tabs on what your children are consuming essentially? Because growing up. I remember people blamed Beavis and Butthead for, like, school shootings. People blamed South Park. They blamed video games. They blamed music. They blamed everything else. I played the same video games. I played the same music. I did not commit any of these things. Now, I was harassed. Beavis and Butthead school. rocks. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's classic. It's not even that bad, honestly. You This is, like, pedestrian compared to other content today. But, like, you know, like kind of getting back into it, though, it's just like, I, I remember like when there was when people try to blame Gore for like <laughs> violence in schools and Gore like confronted her parents like I think you're just mad at us because you are making up the fact that you're failing as a parent to keep track of your child, which I thought was like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. But like They were in the full I, get up, too, yeah. when they did it. It's so good. Yeah, Sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, no, absolutely. But like the thing is, is like, yes, some social media companies have a responsibility but, like, they put down the terms of service to kind of cover their asses. How many of us actually read the fucking terms of service? None of us. Hardly any of us. Except, thank you. Now I've got a profile here. And, like, when people say, oh, well, Discord is not regulating this enough. You can have a server, right? And it takes one person to say, oh, this server is filled with horrible people that are, you know, breaking TOS. And that server gets nuked. Then they got to create another server, and then somebody else comes in, and that server gets nuked once again. It happens all the time. It, it, you can only do so much, but the trolls are never going to go away. You can put all the regulations in the book, what have you. And to, my, for, to clarify my final point, and I'm so glad that you brought this up, right? The average, it, it, the average age that a child gets a cell phone is like 11 years old, right? Now, I don't – you could be the best per, parent in the entire world. Now, my wife and I – we probably will never have kids, and I accept that, right? But um, when when I was living in Georgia in 2019, 
I attended a human trafficking rally. It was more of a gathering, but um, there was uh, it was there was a woman by the name of uh, Gabby Humphreys. Uh, she shared her story on Megan Kelly one time. Well, anyway, she said parents have got to have the talk with their children as soon as possible, like as early as you can when the child can comprehend it, because the average age child has possession of a cell phone is 11 years old. And she said that she grabbed her son, nine years old, and she, you know, pulled up like, you know, a porn video, not to like subject him to it, but says, this is a fantasy, okay? Like what you're seeing right here is not real life. Men do not treat women like this, okay? Because a child, you, you can only do so much when a child is away from you. And they're going to have friends and their parents are not going to be as nearly as strict as you are, essentially. So they're like, oh, dude, look at this girl. Yeah, yeah, these things like that. It's because kids don't know any better. They are very easily influenced by these things. But the fact of the matter is, is she had this conversation because she wants to make sure that her son understands this is not reality. And sometimes a parent really needs to crack down on these things. Now, again, I'm not a parent. It's easy for me to say. But I was a child once, too. My parents cracked down on me. They would not let me watch, like, certain movies because they were afraid of, like, the violent nature of it. But you know what? That's what a parent does. Their job is to protect the child. And at school, it's the teacher's job to protect the child from other things, essentially. And I think it's really, really underrated. Now, you can do so much with a social media company, but I look at it like this. The, this, the, the job starts with the parents at the house. The parent is supposed to explain morals, values, dangers, and, you know, just to kind of keep a lookout on things. Because, you know, in the same exact meeting, right, and I, I'm not going to try to write too much more about this, but I think this is really important. The uh, DeKalb County DA explained, like, how one time they arrested a guy that was a predator. And he wasn't like a predator, like a sexual, he was, he was a predator for traffickers essentially. And he said, well, and so basically to kind of get a lesser charge, he basically sang like a canary and this, like, this is how the system works. Essentially. He gave two examples. He said on social media, we use it all the time. Why? Because we look for the kids that are like, my parents don't understand me. Nobody gets me. People think I'm ugly. They like that why because they are very very easily influenced they're easy to exploit it's like oh i understand you completely you can trust me kind of deal and there was another and then he also shared a story about like how i can go to a food court and i can sit at a mall and i can watch one person and in five minutes i can learn everything i need to know about them based upon how they interact with people based upon how they interact with themselves i know everything i need to know about them that's the kind of stuff that people need to worry about. That's why, like, yes, social media is a terrible thing, but this is why it's so important. If you're a parent or a guardian, you've got to understand what your children and what the people you're responsible for are consuming because there are dangerous people out there, not just people that say, oh, yeah, well, I fucked your mom, got a deal. Oh, yeah, you know, you know, just like Minecraft yourself. Kind of. No, we're talking about dangerous people out there. That's why a lot of this, let me, social media can only do so much. It's the parents and guardians that I feel have to fill the void. Anyway, I'm sorry. I keep ranting. No, you're good. Um, I thought you brought up some really interesting stuff, and I took notes on it. Um, mm -hmm. So I think uh, a part of this is um, what is a parent's role? What is it actually? So when they're, super, when they're really young, I'd say like 10 and under, your job is to be a shield. You are to shield them from a lot of things. You're supposed to let them develop. You're supposed to instill your values into them. Uh, and you shield them from the horrors of the world. When they get a little bit older and they're going to naturally encounter these things, you take up the role of a guardian. Um, and I think that once right around that, like you guide them through a lot of these things that they're going to encounter when they're older. And once you kind of have like a teenager, your job is to allow them to practice having freedom. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to practice it. Like you're keeping an eye on it. And when they fuck up and you're like, that's not how we express freedom. Are you fucking insane? You rein it in. So my kid yep. lost, uh, they, like, I'm a pretty cool dad when it comes to technology. Uh, my kid's been playing video games ever since you can remember. When I started, uh, when I finally took my kid's mom to court, because uh, she wasn't letting me have my kid, she sat with the cell phone. I was like, you gave my four-year-old a fucking flip phone? I don't care what it is. Like, that's fucking insane. Mm -hmm. uh, I was super mad. Um, the cell phone didn't go away. But my kid has now shown that they were not responsible enough to have TikTok. There's no TikTok. Uh, they told somebody uh, on Snapchat where they lived, and I'm like, no Snapchat, no fucking way. And let me find out sure. that you're on it. The phone will be gone. I don't care. This is this. You were practicing your freedom. 
And unfortunately, you made a cru are crucial error, and you can't be trusted with that freedom right now. Um, I see my uncle react to his kids who were, I think, like 7 and 11, somewhere in those two areas, of his two kids, and they had went on porn on one of the computers uh, that he had. And he lost his goddamn mind. There was no teaching moment about it. All he did was scream at them. Parents, a lot of them, are not equipped to handle um, how to engage with their kids about technology. Um, like, at all. And so it, it, I think part of it has to be, what are our priorities? What do we really, really care about? And when it comes to, I, I think for most parents, I just want my kid to be safe. And so sure. eliminating certain apps... I think it's smart, especially I think most of the time the danger is going to be in like the teenage years because that's when people are going to be using these kinds of tools to get to them. Um, sure. But I also think that having no social media is just going to make them unprepared for the real world. You're going to make them weirdos, social outcasts. So you have to balance it out. My concern with holding these companies accountable is that 79% of preteens and teens that engage with social media, uh, 79% end up having a much higher suicide uh, ideation as a young adult. And so when you, when we look at it just as the idea that like, well, like they're bad, but like, I don't know how to, uh, how to rein it in. There are very specific methods that they use to trigger the dopamine centers of your brain to keep you addicted to using them. And these are the things that I'm concerned about. Cause even if the content was all good, this is training an addict brain. Uh, and this is one of the things that I got a better understanding of that made me move away from it. If you don't engage with Facebook for, say, a week, they will find the things that you know that you are most likely to engage with, and they send your phone the notification. So like, even if you're trying to take a break from it, they work even harder to get you to come back. These are the ways in which we can say, like, hey, no more of that. I don't want you to be um, psychologically engineering your shit to keep my kid engaged in it. If they're under 18 years old, you don't get to use the same methods of engagement that you get to use on adults, which there is an argument to be said for adults too. And it's not just Facebook and uh, like Twitter. Uh, even the way that Google lets emails come through is also part of this as well, especially for like high profile individuals. Uh, the way that they let emails come through and they delay certain emails is to keep that same kind of feed to where you're constantly engaging with your uh, emails. It's a really big problem. And it's not as it's it's a lot of people view it as this like looming, vague thing that they know is bad. But how can we ever do anything about it? There are very specific practices that we can eliminate that lets these entities operate essentially the same as they are they don't have to do like all kinds of insane things that'll ruin their companies but we can just say hey when it comes to kids you have uh all these practices they're off the fucking table and if we find out that you're doing it we're gonna find you we'll find you higher and higher um and like i mean we, we hold the servers like facebook their servers are all in the united states if we wanted to we could have them by the balls uh but we're choosing not to do that we need to act like this is a thing that we actually can do something about because we can uh, without sure. crushing these companies, which would be bad, um, and, and not act like this. Uh, the problem is this giant, like, ephemeral threat that this really we have no control over. Um, but it takes a lot of being informed about it. And most people aren't. Most people engage in social media, and they don't feel like me. I didn't feel it. But I noticed after I was off Facebook for two months, I did feel better. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. It just sort of clicked one day. I didn't feel like I had to like grab my phone really fast because for me, that was the go to. Um, yeah. And I felt a big burden was lifted off of me. Like I still use Messenger to talk to people, but that's just the same as texting to me. Facebook itself, uh, even Twitter, Twitter, Twitter can be like that for me sometimes. So I make myself scale it back. I got rid of TikTok because ev every single person you've ever talked to about TikTok, they either spend way, way too much time on it or they realized that they were going to spend way too much time on it and they got the fuck out of there, right? TikTok yeah. is the heroine of social media. It really is. I mean, and we're like a, all aware. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I like find myself like, I'll find like a really a funny like dog video and I'll even show it to my wife <laughs> or I'll show it to my one of my buddies who's a certified dog handler because I like I share those things. But like I, I'm... I used to think TikTok was like the worst thing ever. It still isn't like the greatest thing ever, but like I, I, I use it like as a means of like, okay, yep, yep, yep. I'm usually doing this little number, but if like I watch something and I I laugh at it, I, I like to be amused. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's like that that the whole dopamine thing. 
But like, um, I use Twitter as, like I said, I'm trying to build a profile on there, right? And but like, I I try to like. He, he, here's the thing: like, if I feel like I can engage in a good conversation, I will. But if someone's gonna be an asshole, I'm gonna be an asshole right back. It's just kind of how things are. But like, I, I the only thing I'm gonna like as as far as like like social media companies, when. Mark Zuckerberg was asked, will you stand up and apologize to those families for the pain and suffering they went to? I felt it was an empty gesture. I think he yeah. did it just to kind of show face. But, like, I didn't think it was necessary because we don't ask gun companies to apologize when a gun yeah. death happens. We don't ask Chevrolet, Ford, or anything of those companies to apologize when these things happen. We try to hold the person and the individual accountable. Now, granted, uh, when it comes down to guns, Yes, I believe in the Second Amendment. I do believe that, you know, but I, there, not everybody should own a fucking firearm. It's that simple. Same thing with the internet. Just because social media is there, it does not mean you need to get access to it. Some people need to have that phone taken away from them because they sound like morons when they go on there. And, but again, I really do think that with it, when it comes down to it, a lot of people, some people just need to be checked on what they're observing. If it consumes your entire life, like where... um. I still like do chores around the house. I maintain my responsibilities. Social media does not consume my entire life. If it if social media consumes your entire life where you don't take care of yourself, you don't take care of your family, you know, you you're already too far gone. You've already definitely got a problem. You know, addiction is a very, very serious thing. Uh, because I'm a, a former tobacco addict. I haven't used tobacco in mm -hmm. over 10 years, 11 years. Like, you know, it's okay. But that's just my me though. Yeah, yeah. Like, I still have dreams. I still have dreams about tobacco. I still have dreams about smoking cigarettes. I still have dreams about using. Do you freak dip. out when you if I you have a, do you have a dream and you're smoking a cigarette? You're like, oh my god, what am I doing? I have yeah, those. I, I worry. Yeah, I worry that my wife's gonna be upset with me, stuff like that. I have that all the time. But the thing is though, is because like that's how I know like addiction is a very powerful vice, and it's just it's something that's hard to break away from. Now I can say. Oh, I could break away from social media anytime I want to. That's not necessarily true. It's something I'd have to wean myself off of, essentially. But like the only reason I'm afraid use of that? Is, again, honestly, if you, were, if you were like, "Hey, Alex, you have a problem with social media. Like, you need to stop tomorrow. You can say your get your affairs yeah. in order." Yes, that's scary, right? It would be yeah, absolutely a hundred percent because like I remember that conversation I was having with so and so yesterday. What have they said about me, or what have they said in response? What if they say something and they feel like I've bitched out or something? I need to respond back. You know, it's just like, and, and you know, it's the dumbest thing. I, I'll be the first to admit it's so stupid to argue with a complete stranger on Facebook or Twitter, but I still do it because I'm an idiot. But you know, I mean, it's just, but that's like, that's what I do is I'm trying to build myself a social profile essentially regarding this. Cause like, you know, maybe I'll make a difference somehow. May not, may or may not, but I'm also trying to build a profile here. That's why I'm doing my podcast here essentially. But like, you know, it, it, and again, kind of going back to the, the topic at hand, it's just like I do worry about you know younger generations because some of them are so easily influenced by these things because what they see on TikTok, like they'll see on TikTok, oh my god, Bella Porch, I love Bella Porch, I want to be like Bella Porch essentially. That's not, not everybody can be Bella Porch. Bella Porch was able to find a niche and she made success off of it. It's it's sort of the same thing as like I want to be a professional athlete. Not everybody can be professional. It it takes years to get to that level. But people are turning more to social media because they think that's the greatest gr get rich quick scheme. It's hard. It's really really hard to do so. But people yeah. think, oh, I can do this. I can do this. No, th this is why. Like it, you know, it's dangerous. Because it gives you a false sense of reality, essentially. You feel like you can do this because, oh, I'm on social media all the time. I can make millions off this. No. You know, people like Destiny. Destiny makes a killing because he's good at it. He's successful. Not everybody can be Destiny, though. I mean, that's why I tell people you can't be like me, really, when it comes down to these things. I mean, it's I do this because I enjoy it. But there are things you can do in life that will make you success successful. Social media is a false sense of security if that makes sense yeah um so the the heroin analogy runs pretty deep in and of itself it's harmless it does exactly what uh what people want it to do uh the problem is is with the addiction and when you get mm -hmm. super addicted into it you start making really bad choices that's why i use heroin because like nobody 
like it's not like nobody dies from heroin unless they overdose, you know, or they yeah. sh- or they make poor choices like share needles and stuff. And so uh, you brought up a really good point, like the expectations that it puts on people. Uh, the best example I can think of is like OnlyFans. Um, and this is a conversation that I've had uh, with people before. So look, if you want to do OnlyFans because it'll be like fun for you and that's like what you're into uh, or if you got like a fetish for it or whatever, cool, that's fine. But if you're doing it to make money, then you're going to start to inherently tie your self-esteem and your self-worth and your image of yourself to how much money you're bringing in. So you have to treat it like a job. You got to be promoting yourself eight hours a day. You got to put work into it. Otherwise, you're going to fuck over your brain for absolutely no reason. Um mm-hmm. And like even things like YouTube and stuff, this is present as well. But I think it's just much easier to see with the OnlyFans model. Um, when you talked about the apology uh, that was demanded, it, it shows me two things. One is that we need people in government that actually have the first fucking clue about anything in tech. It's so divorced from reality. Uh, everybody's seen um, when Zuckerberg first talked. Uh, I think was uh, I don't remember before if it was the Senate or if it was in front of the House, and they asked him the craziest shit that was like not applicable at all to him or social media. It was so wild. They have no clue, and to say that like I need you to apologize shows that like why would he not apologize? They're just saying like, well, look, we don't need to punish you like we would or regulate you like we would literally anything fucking else in the entire world. You can just say some words that mean fuck all to you, and you got away with it insane what a message we're sending to them it's 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 beyond the pale to me i i have no idea how uh that we we could approach anything else like anything else that would be such a a a remarkable uh like disservice to the idea of justice uh for the kinds of harm that's happening it it just doesn't um it doesn't compute to me at all um i think for adults, less so with teenagers. Like, the teenagers thing, is my primary concern is um, the way that they view themselves, the addiction thing, and how it can lead to increased suicides um, and things like that. Um, I think these are all really bad for developing minds. But for adults, more than teens, it's the escapism. Like you say, like, well, I go to work. Like, when I heard you explain all the things that you're doing, that's how my dad talked about why he's not an alcoholic growing up. Like, well, I'm not yeah. an alcoholic. I get up and I go to work every day. Like, you, did you have dinner tonight? You know what I mean? Like, I'm fine. The, I, I'm not getting into car accidents. Like, sure, that's fine. Like, I get that you're doing it good, but, like, it's an escapism, though. So, like, if you go on TikTok six hours a day, you might be able to be picking your kids up from school, maybe going to work. You might be making sure that you're fed and everything. But, like, how are you doing with your interpersonal problems you're having with people? Uh, what, what is, what's going on with you when, uh, you think about the fight that you and your partner had or how you haven't talked to your best friend in two years? Um, are you just kind of brushing that off and then looking for something that can completely, uh, delete that from your mind for four hours? I think that it's going to lead eventually to people having less good, less fulfilling lives. However, I'm not anti-social media at all. I just think when it comes to kids, we need to have real legal ramifications when they're not taking the responsibility seriously. And for adults, people just need a better awareness of how it's actually affecting you. And then you're sure. fine to make that choice. Uh, I don't really care if people want to choose. Like, if you want to choose escapism, there's a million other ways to do it. This just happens to be the best at accomplishing that goal. Um, but I think we should at least be aware of it. Uh, sure. Other other than that, I don't really know what else... Uh, I could say, but I, I can tell you this. Nothing's going to happen. They're not going to stop um, fucking with the brains of kids until we act- until it costs them money or until people go to jail. They're not going to do anything about it. Because I tell you what, you're going to give me $4 billion? I'll do whatever the fuck you want if all I got to do is go, my bad. That, yeah. That's nothing to me. Yeah. My I soul mean. is gone. If, if you offer me $4 billion, my soul is deleted. I have no humanity left. Okay. Yeah, you gotta absolutely. you gotta hurt me in the pocketbook after that point. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with what you're saying. Um, you know, when I look at like the uh, whole OnlyFans aspect, I I've listened to like okay, I won't lie, I have listened to the whatever podcast, <laughs> and I've listened to them talk about you know the, the young ladies they have on the OnlyFans, and I talked to a few people that are OnlyFans models. I get why they get into it. You know, it's just like, um, like you know, Sleeve T Rocks and Madame Genevieve. Uh, yeah. I am out of Genevieve. Yeah. yeah. Jen talks about like how she received less sexual harassment in the OnlyFans fear than 
in a Fortune 500 company, which I get. I understand. And, you know, like, I, I firmly do believe that, like, in OnlyFans, you have more autonomy over yourself and you have more say of, like, where your content goes. I get that. I mean, I, I know that there's going to be people out there that are going to buy the content and they're going to leak it online and stuff like that because that's, that's just how things go. But, like, I, I get, like, why someone get into it. But I do think, like, they're ne they need to understand that what stays on the Internet, what goes on the Internet stays on the Internet, essentially. And if they're willing to accept that, hey, you're an adult. You're willing to make these decisions, go for it. You know, I, I fully support it. I don't think we do any good by shaming people into these industries because it's just they're already going to deal with enough as is. They're going to deal with people that are going to like consume their content and then just slut shame them afterwards, essentially. That's yeah. just how things go, especially like in conservative states. The same people are going to say, oh, well, I don't think this is good behavior. They're going to be buying that content like within 10 minutes of shit. I mean, that's just that. that that's I'm just why whatever realist. works. They, yeah. It's humiliate you for advertising. That's it. That's what the model is. Exactly. But I just, I really do think that education is number one because that's why I, I said this last night on uh, uh, Lethe Kai's. Uh, um, uh, what's it going? Yeah, I, I talked with him on about it. I said, I love my country, but we are some of the dumbest motherfuckers in the face of planet Earth because, like, we, when I talked about, like, during the pandemic in 2020, right? When Trump said the China virus, people that were Chinese, Japanese, Thai, Laos, Cambodian, uh, Filipino were getting attacked because people can't tell the difference between all of them, right? Which is it, it, but it's true though because people are dumb as hell. The same thing goes with social media. People think they can start up social media and then boom, they're good to go. Or they hear something on social media, they say their best friends, cousins, uncles, nephew shared a Facebook post about how monkeys are now invading planet Earth. They're going to start shooting monkeys, essentially, because they swear to God that monkeys are invading. That's how stupid social media has made people, essentially. That's why, like, I feel it's so important that people educate themselves, but they're not going to. Not everyone is like us. We don't – they don't exercise the same level of common sense as we are. We understand that social media comes with a price. Social media comes with like, you know, you've got to invest yourself and you've got to understand what you're getting yourself into. I mean, I did a debate about a year and a half ago. I did terrible. I lost that debate. I got slaughtered online, but I accept this. That's just the price you pay for coming online. Not everybody can handle that, though. Now, that's what people need to understand. They think they just can just go into online and they'll get famous right away. Mm -mm. doesn't work like that. I don't intend on being famous. I'm doing this because I, I like doing it. And but I think it's just, uh, education is key. And I'm not saying like go to school, learn how to be a social media. Lawyer. I'm simply saying like taking the time to learn from other people. And, uh, you know, because even Jen talks about like she'd be willing to have a conversation with people that want to get into sex work, essentially, because it's really it, it's not easy. It's not this easy, essentially. It's something that takes time. It takes work to get into it. You got to know what people like. What are some people's fetishes? What are some people things that people are into, essentially? It's not something you just start up and you become rich overnight. It's That's yeah. that false insecurity I was kind of going into. Yeah. Um, and, like, even though I under I fully understand all these things, uh, if I was a young, good-looking woman, I guarantee you I would do it, not put in the work that I need to. And that, this is the problem, too. I think if you're sitting on a nice $20 million dollars, it's pretty easy to not give a shit that I might have to have a conversation with my kids someday down the line. Sure. But if you That's pull like 150 bucks a month and half of that you're spending on like sex toys and like lingerie for it, um, you're not really going to have anything to show for it. And now you're going to have to have these same conversations and, uh, and you're going to know it wasn't really worth it to me. Um, sure. And I think that I would still make that exact same decision because it's that like, I would tell myself that I'm going to put in the work and then probably just not because it's so much like when I said you have to work, like, you have to work it like it's your career. It's not an eight hour like like it's your own business. It's like if I have to put in 16 hours of promo work and uh, shooting new stuff, everything that goes into it a day, then that's what it's going to take. If I want to be successful, there's some pretty mid looking women that make a ton of money because they know how to work the game. And there's some really exactly. gorgeous women that aren't making shit because they think that they're going to get by on just their looks. And it's all going to affect their state of mind and how they view themselves. And that's, Absolutely. that's the, 
that extends out to every other platform just to a lesser extent. I think OnlyFans, I use as an example because it's going to be directly, that's your body. It's not your mind. It's not what you can do. It's your body. And so you're going to have that uh, reflection. Now with other social media like Twitter or like Facebook, uh, it might be about like your intellect or your um, your life that you're putting on display. And it's going to make you think certain things about that based on the kinds of engagement. But I'd say like if you're an adult, we should have people getting a really good grasp on what this is because it goes a lot deeper than people think uh, the way that it yeah. works on your mind. But I don't give a shit if you're an adult. Uh, we have plenty of ways to make bad decisions. I just, um, when it comes to litigation, it's got, it's just got to be focused on the kids. The same reason why a kid can't go buy a pack of cigarettes or buy a case of beer. If I th do, I think if a kid smokes a pack of cigarettes or they get drunk and uh, break some shit in their house and throw up, is it the end of the world? No. I know it's going to happen. Um, it usually turns out fine, but we don't allow it. It happens behind the backs of adults and responsible people. And we don't allow it because we understand that if we don't do something about it, we don't put some barriers in place. Shit's going to get out of hand really fast. And some of that stuff, the kids are going to have their lives ruined from same thing with social media. And that's why it's okay for adults to have unregulated access to it. But all adults know what they're getting into when they buy a pack of smokes or they buy a case of beer and we're able to uh, weigh the pros and cons. Kids aren't. Yeah. They'll see on TV and they say, oh, this is appeal. This is this. That person's drinking a beer. They, they are obviously very cool. Like you'll see like Roadhouse. Hey, Patrick Swayze's beating the shit out of the guy. I want to be like him. Kids yeah. don't understand that. No, it, it, they're, they're very impressionable and people need to take a, a Take that into account. I mean, that's like that's why I say like, you know, parenting is really ideal. I mean, I again, I'm not a parent. Or I won't be a parent. It's okay. I understand that. But like, I I I was a kid at one point, and my parents, you know, I'd say they did a good job raising me. I mean, just it's all about like you know knowing your kids and knowing it's it's like being in it being a teacher. Know your kids. Know how impressionable they are. What 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 makes them tick? What how do they learn? You know, these, these are all very important aspects of what, what it means to be an adult. And like, if you go off and like you, like who I am in the working world is different who I am like right now. Cause I have to sure. have a like, yeah. And that's like, kind of like where it goes to essentially. So like, I'm not going to act like how I am online because then I'm not going to have a job <laughs> very much, you know, just, it, 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 that's why, like, I would say I'm, I have two different personas essentially, but yeah. you, you know where I came from, right? Uh, w wait, what'd you say? I, that's why I would say, like, like what, listen, what I'm saying is, like, if you know where I'm coming from, like, oh, I have, yeah, like, yeah, different personas, yeah, if you know where I'm coming from, like, it's like, it, it's who I am all the time, but like, for example, how I, you and I are talking right now, I'm not gonna talk with like people I make deliveries to, right? Oh, because yeah, 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 have a job. yeah, so. I, I essentially ran the entire business. I, I would work for an, a small IT company that like we did computer repair and we did surveillance and sure. like cabling. And when the boss left for Africa for two months and then also six months, I, I was the boss and, um, uh, each, each type of work that I entered in, uh, was a little bit different, but at the end of the day, all of these things, I'm still a salesman mm -hmm. when you're, when you're running, uh, it doesn't matter what part of the company you are, whether you're just yep. representing, you're always selling yourself as a representative of the company or you're selling a product. And that's way different than I'm going to be, um, in real life or even on even even when i'm online like like i'm mean, like yeah you know like the stream and all that but like i don't even ask people to give me money because i like to know that this isn't the same thing as those things so you know sure. the higher pitched voice uh i'm going to talk a little bit faster and more rhythm you know it's you're bringing out the parts of you that you can present that you know that people like whereas outside of that you can be less likable and then you can know if people actually like you uh sure absolutely but i think that's actually one of the things about social media too, is it has people in that salesman mindset all the time. And like, good God, fucking kill exactly. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, in a video yep. game. Yeah. Uh, but like, um, I really do think that, you know, social media, people need to be educated upon it. Really? Yeah. Like the turn, it, it goes beyond the terms of service. Cause like I said, kids are going to see terms of service. They're going to scroll past it and they're just going to hit accept. You know, that's where, like, where people need to, like, understand these things. In the Senate, when I watched Tom Cotton ask that gentleman who owns uh, TikTok, he's the CEO of TikTok, if he's a member of the Chinese Communist Party, and the guy's like, no, I'm from Singapore. 
you know, like, why, why would I, why would I do that? It's just like, I was like, this is not how you do it. He's asking for the gotcha question essentially. And that's not saving anything. That's not helping anything essentially. But like it, at the end of the day, it's not up to the Senate to adjudicate. And it's definitely uh, the social media companies are only going to do so much after that. It's our responsibility as people to educate ourselves on these things. But yeah. That, it's a two step approach. Too. Absolutely. But um, uh, before we close up shop, uh, was there anything else you wanted to cover, or are you good? Um, uh, I guess just because I, I talked to you a little bit about it, uh, I just sure. want to say um, that we're not, the universe doesn't exist in a black hole. I've been putting out some mm -hmm. stuff about it. Um, another, another online figure has been claiming that we exist in a black hole. And honestly, he just doesn't know who he's fucking with. Um, I've studied physics mm -hmm. since I was like 15. I've not never had any jobs in it, but I'm a nerd. This is what nerds do. We learn and we obsess yeah. and we read and we read and we watch shit. And um, so I, if you look at any of my socials, uh, if you wonder why I'm uh, talking about that the universe doesn't exist in a black hole, it's because I'm right. And I'm probably going to keep doing it for like the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And if, um, okay. if you think, if you, uh, if you, if you see anybody who seems to like agree with this super bad take, feel free to send them my way. I've been pretty good at um, very clearly, logically disproving this idea. Like, but, like what? Like, uh, like flat earthers? Do you talk to them all, at all? I want to so bad. I put a open invitation on Twitter. I want to debate flat earthers in like the reverse of a debate. My invitation is mm -hmm. convince me that I'm going to challenge everything that doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to ask you to square all the circles that are going to pop up for me, but I'll listen. I'll be good faith. I, I Any flat earther that you know, please send them my way because I swear to God, I will give them all the benefit of the doubt, all the uh, good faith and charity required to have a real conversation about it. But you still have to convince me. I'm not going to agree with you if I don't. But yeah, I, I would love to hear what some of the um, most passionate and most thoughtful flat earthers really have to say because... I haven't looked into it a whole lot. It's just really easy for me to discard it. I said I'm a physics guy, yeah. but yeah. Um, I'm willing to well, listen because I really want to know how you could be so convinced. Well, I, I actually, I actually asked a guy in Discord one time. He's like, "It's like, okay, so you're a flat earther, right?" And he's like, "Yes." He's like, "If I was to go into outer space, right, or if you were to go into outer space in a rocket ship, yeah. and you turn that rocket ship around and you look at the Earth, what are you going to see? What does the Earth look like to you?" And yeah, he's like, and I gave a couple examples, and this is exactly how he described it. He says, basically, think of it as like you've got the globe, but you've got this the, the atmosphere, and then the earth, and then there's like rock beneath it. It basically looks like a uh, snow globe, it, like a snow globe. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. And that's just, he says, that's what the earth looks like. And I'm so I asked him the next question. It's like, okay, let me ask you another question. Why is it that every astronaut that's gone to outer space that's seen the earth is not a flat earther? He's like, oh, that person is not a real astronaut. Astronauts aren't a real thing. That's just a conspiracy theory. I'm like, what? He's like, they aren't real people. They are just actors. <laughs> Where'd they go to acting school? It's just like NASA. That's the, it, but like they say NASA is an acting school. It's yeah. like, oh. But like I actually was part of a uh, Discord. It was like the, the the debate flat Earth, but it got nuked because people started talking about you know other topics that broke terms of service. So. It's it was hilarious. Like there was one guy. He was from Scotland. He was like the most cross man I've ever talked to from Scotland. The guy just had the angriest accent, and I could not stop laughing every time he started yelling. So, uh, the the reason why flat Earth is so appealing to me is that um, it's one of the I have like a handful of topics that I in my mind I know are incorrect, but I can argue them so much better than the people that advocate for it. Like if mm -hmm. if you ask me, uh, like if you said like why is Earth flat? I'd be like, well, give me an example of why it's right. People say gravity. Like, no, the the disk is moving at an upward rate with the rest of our solar system, which is just simulating gravity. I've never heard them say that. I hate that they won't say. If you're gonna be wrong, give me the best reasons to make you wrong, please. Give me uh, sure. an argument that at least makes sense within your own frame. But whenever I see stuff, it seems like it violates their own frame at some point. It's like when I was a teenager sure. and I'd argue with uh, people about religion. I'm like, but you're contradicting yourself. Like, I don't understand why you're animately arguing with me when, like, your own reality is broken after that argument. Like, I don't get it. So sure. 
maybe maybe there's some people out there that have like really consistent ideas about flat earth and i'd love to see it um i just i'm worried that nobody's taking me up on it i'll tell you well, that yeah if i if i join another uh flat earth discord i'll send you an invite how's that that, that would be great yeah. Well, anyway, I think we can go ahead and uh, close up shop. Uh, sure. Drazi, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. This was a great conversation. This is why I like doing stuff like this because I feel like, you know, even if like we have different ideas, it's great to get those ideas out there, especially like, you know, it's topic that we don't always talk about on the day to day, but it's just, it's good to get it out there, you know? Yeah, I agree. I think that um, the best thing we can do for the divide in the country is to talk about things. Uh that aren't getting talked about and to talk about things from both sides. I think it's just uh, the best thing we could possibly do. Absolutely. Um, it, you want to go in and give yourself like a quick uh, plug of like where people can find you. I've already got in the description, but if you want to tell people that the best way to find you. Hell yeah. Kick, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, that's all Elder Drazi. If you see my name in his description, that's how you spell it. If you want to look for me anywhere, that's how you're going to find me. I also have a discord. If you want to be in the discord, you can just hit me up on, any uh, like Twitter or any of the uh, live streams. Oh, and YouTube, obviously. YouTube, obviously. Yep, absolutely. So, all right. Anyway, um, you could just uh, stick around real quick after this, but I'm just going to close up shop. Uh, thank you, ever everybody, so much for tuning in on this channel and on Drazi's channel. And I hope to see everybody uh, next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be having a uh, guest do be on at that point. So, uh, when I want to hear everybody, good night. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Let me see. All right, thanks. All right. Sorry, I just had to close up shop on that stuff. So that was really actually really fun. That was actually a lot of fun though. Like that was a great conversation, honestly. Thanks, man. Um yeah, I I didn't know uh well you taught me stuff about my own topics and I think that's really, really valuable. I I'm so fucking pissed off that, that woman Sledding 14 year olds work, uh, slaughterhouse. That's, I would have never known. And I actually really care about that stuff. So, yeah. um, uh, I appreciate it too. And, uh, we got, you got people in my, like, uh, I don't know if it was your stuff necessarily or what, but like, me and my chat were like a lot more animated than normal. We hit a oh, hundred chats pretty early on this one. So, oh, um, good. yeah, guys, if you, uh, if you like this style of show, uh, he does this weekly. Yeah. Every yep. Saturday? Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Yep, there's yeah. the cats. Give the Alex Kirsch Project a uh, a follow. And you're... Absolutely. Oh, you're on everything, right? I'm a, I am I don't have a quick, a kick account, but I do have Twitch, I do have YouTube, and I have cats that are knocking my cameras around and everything around. Um, yeah, I have on Twitter, just type in the Alex Kirsch Project. Um, you'll find me there. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where you'll find me, though. Um, I I don't have very many followers, but that's okay. Oh, he froze. I'm not looking for people that are going to necessarily agree with me. I'll bring on a conservative or somebody that's like doesn't agree with me whatsoever, if it makes the contra, contra, uh, the conversation interesting but like i'll bring people on that i think are good faith and you know drazi i just want to appreciate you for uh coming on one of these days uh if i'm down in your neck of the woods i'll uh we'll go out and grab a beer or something like that together you know oh dude for real if you ever headed towards detroit just hit me up uh hang out for sure absolutely so but anyway i'm gonna uh i'm gonna head out for the time being but hey thanks a lot man i appreciate you yeah peace out homie you have a good night you too now take care thanks uh oh oh okay somebody put something in my uh discord uh it's just so you guys can uh it's a little bit easier i guess i'm gonna put his stuff in the chat oh my god there we go Yeah, I've talked to Alex quite a bit uh, off stream, but there's his links. Um, he seems like a solid dude. That's why I agreed to go on his uh, podcast. Um, I think that he's a pretty genuine guy. Uh, 
I talked to him a little bit in Wix server before, but we we DM'd back and forth about uh, living in the same state in the area and stuff. Seems like a pretty cool guy. Um, yeah, this was my earlier stream for the day. I forgot that I had this, so um, I'm picking up where we left off tomorrow then. Um, and then on Monday, um, I'm going to do uh, another episode of The Umbrella Academy. Where I'm going to try to play through some more Resident Evil 4. We're going to listen to stuff about physics. We're going to understand why I am so correct and Mr. Grill is so wrong. Um, and I just want to be clear. I do have a uh, like a pretty aggressive way that I'm approaching him on this. But I do really appreciate that he's um, he's like emotionally invested in physics. And I think that's wonderful. I really do. Um, I love that. But um, I think that it's the role of other people that have been invested in it a lot longer to knock you down a peg or two when you're um, getting a little bit out of your lane. No, I keep checking my uh, Gmail, though. I'm going to look for um, alternative ways of contact. Um, so, yeah, I just think I just think he needs to be knocked down a peg or two. And take that kind of passion that he has and look at the subject more broadly before coming to some like very much like anti mainstream conclusions. When it comes to stuff like this, I think you have to start with like the mainstream stuff and then find what doesn't seem right and investigate it <coughs> for yourself. Because I didn't go into this thing the Big Bang didn't happen or that like I disagreed with Dark Matter. It took a long time of like evaluating all these things and seeing like are there alternative explanations that, um, makes sense given the bulk of knowledge that I have. Um, <coughs> yeah, he does want me to bring it, but I think he wants to talk to a physicist first, which um, I'm just afraid that if he does that, then they're going to steal my thunder because I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm so ready to interrogate. Like, I feel like I'm going to go into it interrogation style rather than debate style. Um, like, why do you think this? Okay, do you know what that means? Okay, um, I'm going to explain to you what you just said and tell me why you're coming to this conclusion here about this. <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> That's the kind of conversation or debate I want to have, really. Um... Because we have a disagreement about facts. So I need to see where the disconnect is about the facts. And why this isn't a wholly emotional argument. Because he's convinced that this is a true fact of the matter. So we need I need to see what information are you relying on to lead you to this conclusion. Because there has to be incorrect information about this. Or the conclusion you're drawing from this is somehow severely misguided. Oh, that's annoying to bring on a physics guy. Yeah, he he said that like if him and I talked about it, then it would just be like uh, two crazy people yelling at each other. And I'm like, I take issue with that. Um, I've done a very good job of everybody that I've talked about physics uh, in front of, of presenting myself like somebody who knows what the fuck they're talking about. Like, this is like my passion. This is this is why I'm bothered by it. Uh, I'm gonna bring this up to him too. Um, it would be like me uh, trying to come to Mister Girl. And tell him that he's wrong about um, pedophilia or like the way that society engages with it or like um, child sexual assault. Like this is his bread and butter. This is a topic he cares so much about and has invested a lot of time and energy trying to get a good understanding about the situation. So that way he can inform other people about it. But that's physics for me. Physics and religion are like my... Like these, these are like precious subjects to me that I care so much about and I'm so invested in and have been for a really long time. And if I think that if anybody who like watched both of us heard that I was going to challenge Mr. Girl's, uh, ideas about that stuff, they'd be like, well, you're probably going to lose just because you know how, like, he's a wealth of knowledge about it. He's done everything he can to like be informed about it. And that's me with physics. And I didn't do it because anybody's paying me to do it. I just loved doing it. Um, where does flat earth come from? Is it also the Bible? I'm pretty sure that the Bible doesn't make claims of flat earth, but I could be wrong. 
I think that people just like to lean on the Bible because it's an easy justification for them. Well, where does it say the book that is round? Tell me that. That kind of a argument. Sorry, I made them a redneck. I'm pretty bigoted towards uh, rednecks. I can't help it. That is how I feel. But at least I'm, at least I'm open about it. I'm not gonna lie about it. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Um. Night. Uh, I'm gonna hang out with my dad. We're gonna go see. Um, uh, Escape from Manhattan. I'm so excited. I, I, uh, I'm so happy that they brought it back to theaters in my area. I'm like totally geeked about it. Uh, it's one of the, it's like one of the greats, uh, in cinema history, in my opinion. Oh wait, how am I gonna convince Mr. Girl to speak to me first? He's already agreed. We've DM'd about this. Uh, we've I've challenged him publicly, and he said yes. And then I've also DM'd him about it. So I'm waiting on him. Um, and if. If it goes for like too long, I can accuse him of running up from it because that's probably how I'll feel. Like I wouldn't just do it just to like, like dunk on him or whatever. But uh, I at a certain point I would feel like he doesn't think that he can handle the heat in the kitchen. Oh, I I mean I can't convince him of anything like that. That's on him. Um, but like it's not like I'm not gonna like touch base with him and check in with him about it over time. Uh, but it, you know, it's not really about the glory of like taking him down. Uh, but, uh, there's like the physics nerd in me would uh, like that. Um, because like, especially like when I've argued with like my friend and stuff, like there, there is very much a desire when you hear your, uh, in any like nerdy kind of circles, when your friend says something that's just like so wrong, there's this like animal like desire in you to like, just want to like smack them down. Uh, because that's like, that's just how like nerds are. Like, we just want to be right about the thing that we're, like, way too into for no reason. Other than, like, that's just what we're drawn to. So there's there's that, like, that part of me that I'm not going to deny. I would really like to... Uh, I, I really do just want to, like, shut him down for that reason. But it's not... Um, like, in no part of that is there any part of me that, like, wants to, like, hurt him. Like, I want to lob insults, but I don't want to be insulting. I want to talk shit, but I don't want him to feel shitty. It's same kind of same kind of vibe as like him challenging me to Mortal Kombat, or like me challenging him to Mortal Kombat, whichever way. I have very much the same like um, desire for the fight, uh, cause like yeah, there's people watching, but like for me when that's happening, it's just about me and him, and I want to be right. I want him to admit that I'm right more than anything on that. Uh, even if I and if I can't, uh, then I at least want other people to see it and go like okay. The crazy, like, that is a really big part of it for me is that I I don't want anybody else to start thinking this. Like, if a year from now, uh, I have Mr. Girl fans trying to argue with me that the universe is in a black hole, uh, I think that I will have failed in this mission. Yeah, I, I love Mr. Girl. He's my favorite content creator of all of ever, um, which is why uh, I think that uh, yeah, part of it is like I think that if you're Mr. Girl Orbiter uh, or like if, you, if you're a big enough fan and you're a streamer and all that I think that part of your job is to tell me he's being stupid when he's being stupid and I always have been uh, the person to do that and if I, if I didn't if I didn't call him out of the black hole stuff, all the times where I've disagreed with everyone else's, everyone else thinks differently than me about him and like his motivations for things. And they called me like a Mr. Girl simp. Then like, uh, my credibility is like totally in question if I don't challenge him when I know he's fucking wrong. So yeah, that, um, Sunday going to do the other erudite video. And if I'm, if I'm feeling up for it, I forgot about the Brittany Simon, Mr. Girl one. Um, that's that's part of it too and then there was only like one more video after that and then that thing will be done and then monday umbrella academy for sure right uh thanks for being here guys uh i noticed that Rao didn't show up uh i was gonna debate him but uh next time he's here uh i will debate him uh about my takes on the video last night